At number 10 we have Britney Spears. After having a pretty public mental breakdown, Britney Spears made a spectacle of smearing food across her face in a restaurant. Britney was described as acting weird by fellow staff and celebrities present at the time of the incident. While sitting at her table, Britney started to play dress up with her dinner. While many were left feeling concerned and disturbed by the incident, the staff were quick to check on the star and escorted her from her table and out of the restaurant. Britney would then be later informed that she was no longer welcome in the restaurant or on the hotel grounds itself. Now, her behavior herself wasn't a sin or rude behavior, however, how she portrayed herself in public and how she never issued an apology for her actions definitely made some people raise some eyebrows. Luckily for Britney, after she cleaned herself up, the restaurant lifted its band of two years and she was later pictured celebrating her 28th birthday. Now, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number 9. Ariana Grande Ariana once got banned for life from a donut shop after the star was caught on camera licking a bunch of donuts she didn't pay for. In 2015, the star entered the Wolfie Donut Shop with some friends. When the clerk went to the back room, Grande would proceed to lick some donuts that she didn't pay for. Later, the owner of the restaurant watched the video and would end up banning her from the location for life. They would also go to try press charges against her. However, nothing ever went through with the charges because the incident would have only cost $4 for the donut she didn't pay for. The owner, however, was very upset with Ariana and said not even an apology from Grande would have caused him to change his mind. Unfortunately for Grande, the incident would have caused her chance to be booked to play a gig at the White House and she would later go on to make jokes about herself for the incident. At number 8, we have Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose was once kicked out of a bar in New Orleans for allegedly throwing fries at the wait staff. The star was described by the owner as being a child because she threw a big tantrum in the middle of the restaurant. After she threw the tantrum, the staff booted her from the establishment where she then started to curse out the bartender and even began to throw food at the staff member. Ruby later would write a Facebook post where she didn't deny throwing the fries. However, she did explain why she did it. Ruby claimed that they waited 60 minutes for the fries and over 90 minutes for food that never showed up to the table. When they asked the bartender what was taking so long, he offered Ruby and her table some free drinks. When the star told the bartender no thanks, she said he started to mock her and her friends. At one point, the bartender even told her to go call her sponsor, and that's when the star reacted to throwing a french fry at the staff member. Ruby would later say she regretted how she acted, and maybe she wouldn't throw french fries again. But maybe next time, the bartender wouldn't be so insane. Sensitive. Number 7. Stuart Raw Not only has Stuart been kicked out of Nobu, but he's also been banned from the popular Japanese restaurant. Back in 2012, the New York Post reported that the billionaire was banned for life as he tried to bribe people to give up their table for him. He then continued to call the manager Sharon, demeaning names, while he was escorted out of the restaurant. However, the drama wouldn't stop there. Stuart would then send an email to Nobu co-owner Drew demanding that the the manager be fired and seat seats some big name celebrities such as Leonardo DiCaprio, Alicia Keys, and Mark Wahlberg. This also isn't the first time the billionaire hasn't played well with others, as the star has allegedly started fights with Tiger Woods and has even been thrown out of a celebrity Hamptons party after being labeled a stalker. If we learned anything from Stewart, it's that just because you have money, it doesn't give you the right for a free pass. Number 6. Jamie Kennedy Jamie Jamie Kennedy once helped save a woman in a car crash after getting kicked out of a restaurant in Houston. After performing at the Houston Improv, the comedian decided to head over to the Yard House for some drinks with his friends. However, the management staff at the Yard House had to ask Jamie to leave and proceeded to escort the star out of the building for using profanity with the wait staff. After leaving the establishment, without a fight, Jamie decided he wasn't ready to go home for the night and proceeded to head to a different bar. Around 2.40 a.m., when the star was walking to the next next location, a car flipped over up onto the sidewalk where they were walking just 10 feet in front of them. Jamie and his entourage then proceeded to help the two women out of the smoking car. Number 5. Jamie Foxx Stars witnessed Jamie Foxx get kicked out of a restaurant while he was assaulted at his table. Jamie was reportedly having dinner at the restaurant when a customer approached his table and complained to him that him and his friends were being too loud. When the group proceeded to not care, the person yelled, you don't want to mess with me? I'm from New York. Jamie then fired back, F you, 
I'm from Oakland. The person then began to charge at Fox and some witnesses even said Fox began to fight back and took the person down. Both parties were eventually thrown out of the restaurant for their bad behavior. Number 4 we have Dennis Rodman. Charles Oakley had to once kick Dennis Rodman out of his steakhouse for eating off of other people's plates. Charles said he agreed to meet with Dennis at his steakhouse after the two made an appearance at a Miami event together. However, before he arrived he got a phone call from his manager telling him to get to the location as fast as he could. When Charles arrived to the location, he looked through the window and saw Dennis eating, then moving to the next table and eating some more. Charles went straight up to Dennis and asked him what he was doing. Dennis responded by saying, I'm relaxing and trying to entertain. Now Charles clearly wasn't impressed with the star's action and proceeded to kick him out of the restaurant. He then told the basketball star to never come near him again, destroying their relationship off the court. What Dennis thought was a joke clearly wasn't, and he should have known better than to do that in a high class restaurant. At number three, we have Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage was once kicked out of a restaurant after being mistaken for being homeless. Now, the Oscar winner was at the Lari Prime Rib restaurant located in Las Vegas. In a video later obtained by The Sun, you could see the stars sitting on the restaurant sofa in a drunken state. Now, it's easy to see why the restaurant would have mistaken the star first as being homeless considering he was wearing cheetah print PJ pants and he had no shoes on. While waiting for the table, he was acting rowdy and proceeded to get into an altercation with the staff. Even after being escorted out of the restaurant, Cage continued to argue with the staff while trying to go back in. While Nicholas did ignore to comment about the incident, he did say his work did help him avoid getting into situations like the one at the restaurant. Number two, Jenna Fisher. Now, Jenna actually wasn't kicked out of a restaurant on in real life. However, her character Pam in the comedy show The Office was. It all started when Jenna decided to tweet a photo of her picture in front of the restaurant where she asked if she should try to go in. Pam in the show was so tipsy she continually began to fall out of her chair and display some pretty rude behavior. It got to the point that the restaurant owner stated she was no longer welcome back at the restaurant chain ever again. Number one. James Corden. Recently, James Corden was banned from a famous New York City restaurant after being a jerk to wait staff. The owner of the restaurant, Keith McNally, posted to his Instagram to state the comedian was effectively banned from his famous bistro after he became one of the most abusive customers to enter location since it opened. So you're probably wondering what led James to be banned. Well, Keith detailed two examples of how the star misconducted himself after the restaurant which led to his ban being indefinite. The first example is he was extremely nasty to servers, demanded drinks to come to his table and that they be comped altogether. The second incident took place when James wife Julia received her egg yolk omelette only to find that there was some egg whites mixed in. The omelette was then remade and brought back to the table with fries instead of a salad. James then continued to yell at the staff that they didn't know how to do their jobs. Eventually the situation was resolved when the floor manager decided to step in. James has yet responded to Keith's allegation, however, if one thing's clear, he definitely won't be eating at this location for a while. And number 10, we have Kim Kardashian. When Kim Kardashian took her son Saint to an LA Rams game, Kim was sadly met with boos from the crowd when her face was featured on the big screen. Soon after, a video would start to circulate on social media, which showed the crowd cameras first focusing on John Legend before cutting to Kim, and when the video cut to Kim, him, the crowd would start to boo in the background. Although the reason behind the booing was unclear, Kim decided to react to the situation in a cute casual way. The star ended up looking up at the screen wearing a pair of signature huge sunnies and blew a little kiss while offering a small little wave to the crowd, making it such an iconic moment. Many fans were quick to call out the booing as it was a shame to see people boo her when she was trying to treat her child to such a beautiful gift. I mean, so apparently normal people can be shown on the camera but as soon as Kim Kardashian is, it's no longer okay. 
All right, my little peaches, are you enjoying this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And number nine, we have Emma Stone. In October, Emma Stone and her husband, Dave McCary, experience what it's like to be booed by fans who are loyal to the New York Mets. After the Jumbotron showed them wearing San Diego Padres attire to support the team, just as the Jumbotron operator promptly put up and held a shot of Emma and her husband repping the Padres gear, the crowd would erupt in boos, and they definitely didn't deserve it. So we all have our opinions on different sports teams, but isn't the whole point of the game about bringing people together to support our favorite teams. We seriously need to stop judging people for who they support, and we really need to start supporting the teams we like instead. However, even though the crowd did boo Emma and Dave, the San Diego Padres would later post a photo saying they were big fans of these fans. At number eight, we have Kendall Jenner and Kylie Jenner. It turns out that Kim wouldn't be the only one from her family booed at a Rams game, as both Kendall and Kylie Jenner got booed by the crowd after being shown on the jumbo trip. When the stars were enjoying watching the Los Angeles Rams in a Baltimore Ravens game in the VIP section, the camera would pan across their group. In a video shared to Instagram, it would show Kendall noticing her face on the big screen while blowing a little kiss to the chorus of fans booing. Mike Sington would then later take to Twitter with a photo of Kylie and Kendall at the game on the Jumbotron and would say the entire stadium booed when Kendall and Kylie were shown on it. Now, the sisters have received a lot of ridicule from the public, but considering they weren't doing anything but watching the game, it was a straight up rude move by the sports fans. At number seven, we have Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift outraged a gaggle of fans when they waited to catch a glimpse of her after Abigail Anderson's wedding. TMZ would later post a video that showed Taylor exit the church and it showed security going to great lengths to shield her from a bunch of kids and adults standing outside hoping that Taylor would grace them with her presence for a moment. It was only a 10 foot walk to the church to the waiting SUV. However, Taylor wanted to support her friend on her wedding day rather than playing catch up with her fans. So fans quickly went from being like, we love you Taylor, to booing. And some even chanted, very disappointing, not cool. But the only uncool thing was fans thinking it was okay to show up at a wedding, uninvited, and expecting the bridesmaid to show them some love. Celebrities are normal people, and they need their space too, guys, so stop going to great lengths to try to meet them. It's just not right. Number six, we have Cher Lloyd. It's hard enough dealing with the pressure of performing in front of a crowd, and Cher Lloyd definitely didn't deserve what happened to her at V Festival back in 2020. While the star was performing, she would leave the stage in tears after she was hit with two bottles filled with urine. As the singer would leave the stage, the crowd would ignite with booze. When the singer decided to return to the stage, she would tell the crowd it's hard enough being up here and it's not nice having bottles chucked at you. More bottles would then start to fly towards her on the stage, so she ended up canceling her show. Cher definitely made the right decision to walk away from the disaster rather than engaging with her fans, and it really makes you wonder why anybody would want to throw bottles of urine at someone in the first place. That's just disgusting and no one deserves that. At number five, we have Christian Stewart. Christian Stewart collaboration with director Oliver Isaias in the film Personal Shopper was booed following a press screening at the Cannes Film Festival. Now, it's a certain perverse genius to unveiling a ghost movie at Cannes Festival that relies on the audience to deliver boos as the final credits roll. No one doubts what Oliver was going for in his Personal Shopper film, but it's clear that Cannes Film Festival can't handle ghosts. Now, after after the audience had finished hissing and groaning during the credit rollout, Christian Stewart would later laugh it off in a press conference saying, hey, everyone did not boo. Things like this do happen, but maybe if you don't like the film, write a review. There's no need to embarrass the creators at an event like a film festival when it already took them so much courage to show their work in the first place. And number four, we have Drake. Drake received a cold welcome when he made a surprise guest appearance at Tyler the Creator's Camp Vlog Na Carnival in Los Angeles back in 2019. Many fans in attendance were expecting Frank Ocean to be the surprise performer, so when Drake took the stage to perform a short set, fans were shocked. When Drake took the stage, he would say, they told me to come out and maybe do like two or three songs for y'all tonight, but I'm gonna ask for your permission because I know this is your festival, and I'm gonna ask your permission if I can stay up here and turn up with you a little longer tonight. If you want me to keep going, I will keep going. The crowd then started to boo and scream. 
screamed no. Drake then, before exiting the stage, said, It's been love, I love y'all. I go by the name Drake, thank you for having me. And then Drake would exit the stage 20 minutes earlier than he was supposed to. Many of Drake's fans would then even head to the internet to say it was a pretty painful moment to watch. Drake just wanted to vibe with you guys, and you ended up going 20 minutes without a show. So, how did that one feel? And number three, we have Kevin Hart. Take Kevin Hart's mistake and know it's probably not a good idea to mess with crab fest attendees. To be fair, comedy can be a brutal industry. However, Kevin performed a stand up routine during a crab festival in New York and it didn't go well. The crowd at the crab festival was really enjoying their seafood, music, and dancing when the festival officials halted the entertainment to introduce Kevin's set. When Kevin went to make a joke, a lady in the audience would so quietly say, No, baby, no, just give it up, baby. Hart would then go on to mimic it in a sad but gentle voice. Other people in the crowd would then start to yell, Let us eat our crabs. We just want to eat our crabs. Which became a polite way to boo him off the stage. I mean, you guys did book Kevin Hart to be there at the event, so that one definitely had to hurt the comedian. And number two, we have Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber got booed at a Montreal concert after he did taunt Canadian hockey fans. Now, Justin Bieber definitely lost some fans in Montreal after the singer performed back in March during his Justice World Tour. The singer would be booed by the concert goers after the pop star made some comments about the city's hockey team, the Montreal. Canadians. Now, if you've ever been to Montreal, then you know they take their hockey team pretty seriously. So you don't want to make the mistake as Justin did, or you might have to deal with some pretty diehard fans, and it's never a good situation. Now, Bieber was on the stage, and it's like he almost forgot what city he was in when he expressed his love for the Toronto Maple Leafs. When he said, How about those Leafs, though, huh? This immediately met the audience with a sea of loud boos and profanities, and some concert goers even stuck up the finger. Justin then went on to say that Austin Matthews scored a goal against the Canadians and that he was doing some great work in Montreal. Now, do you think Justin deserved to be booed for this one? And let me know in the comments below. And at number one today, we have One Direction. In 2013, One Direction was booed at the MTV VMAs when the group won a Moon Man for Best Song of the Summer for their song Best Song Ever. However, when the group took the stage, they would soon be greeted with boos from the audience over the result of the viewer voted award. One Direction fans clocked in a total of 8 million votes which pushed the band to the top of the category. When Styles said wow we want to say a massive massive thank you to all of our fans. We know this is a voted award so thank you to everyone who voted. It means a lot very much to us. They would then be met with some boos. Now I get it, Miley Cyrus should have won for her song, We Can't Stop. But you all didn't have to be sore losers about your favorite song not winning the award. One Direction fans won the award for their group, Fair and Square, so just let them have their moment and take to the internet later. And at number 10, Travis Scott. Travis has faced a lot of backlash in the past, as we've come to learn. Between the offensive things that he said and his conduct during his concerts, and because of this, Travis very well could be blacklisted from performing at the Super Bowl. We have of course heard about what happened at Travis Scott's Astroworld concert last year. The rapper's performance ended in tragedy as the chaos that ensued during a concert left multiple people passed away and hundreds injured. Ten people lost their lives due to the events that unfolded and many others are still recovering from their injuries, as well as the families of those affected still trying to cope with everything. There's a lot of footage circling the internet showing what happened that night and the madness that occurred during the performance, with people showing the crowds of people and even some fans yelling to stop the show. After the incident, we found out that the Houston police chief actually warned Travis about crowd control prior to the event, expressing his concerns for public safety at the event. After people found this out, Travis started facing even more backlash as fans said that if he really listened to this warning, these casualties could have been avoided. The NFL certainly wouldn't want to take a chance on Travis after this tragic incident. And in at number 9, Kanye West. Kanye West isn't the nicest guy out there, and I think we all know that by now. Whether it's on stage or on Twitter, I'm sure we've seen Kanye West being pretty mean and offensive on multiple occasions. Remember the VMA incident where he stole Taylor Swift's spotlight after winning her award? We also have to mention his tweets as well. He's very outspoken online and has a tendency to offend people a lot. 
from his claims about Bill Cosby being an innocent man following his allegations, as well as his tweets bashing his own family members, Kanye doesn't hold back on this and has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, making them hate him. Because of all the backlash that he's faced, as well as his unpredictable nature, the NFL probably will have him banned so as not to risk the success of their halftime show. In at number 8, Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson is known for his alt metal music and unique style, but he's also someone that a lot of people have come to hate. Actress Evan Rachel Wood came out earlier last year to name this singer as the person who inflicted harm upon her, accusing him of manipulating and brainwashing her from a young age. The actress posted a testimony to her Instagram calling Manson, as well as the industry out for his actions and for enabling him all this time. In the past, Evan Rachel Wood has spoken out about the fact that she was in a toxic relationship and has detailed some of the horrifying things that she experienced, but she never named him until that time. In a published testimony, she said, quote, He broke me down through means of starvation, sleep deprivation, and threats against my life, sometimes with weapons, which would result in me having severe panic attacks where I was unable to breathe or stop shaking. She also said that he had her phone tapped and had threats made against her loved ones. Manson has lost all credibility in the industry as well as in general public, so as a result, I wouldn't be surprised if he never held another live performance again, especially not at the Super Bowl. And at number 7, Kings of Leon. I'm sure not everyone thought Kings of Leon's set was all that horrible, but some people definitely did. One LA Times writer slammed the 2011 performance, pointing out all the problems with the set. In one part of the piece, the writer says about the band, quote, Lead singer Follow Will's voice is far from ugly, but when he lapses into his tomcat sounds or his strange frog croak, it's a misuse of a fine instrument. The writer also called the band's most popular songs, quote, experiments they've outgrown. Ouch. All in all, this writer found the band's performance to be pretty lackluster. In at number 6, Radiohead. While Radiohead was performing at the 2017 Coachella Festival, their performance issues got so bad, the band decided to walk off stage. The band headlined the 2017 show, but during the performance they experienced tons of issues with the sound. First, the sound went out during a performance of their song, 15 Step, and it was so bad they decided to leave the stage to regroup. When they eventually came back, they started to play the song, Let Down, but they were forced to walk off stage yet again after the sound cut out. When the band returned, frontman Tom York addressed the issue, telling the crowd, quote, Can you actually hear me? He then added, I'd like to tell a joke to lighten the mood, but we're Radiohead. So F it. The band ended up playing the rest of the two hour set with minor interruptions, but the issues put a huge damper on the overall performance. Halfway number 5, Sly Stone. While performing at the 2010 festival, Sly Stone ruined his own performance with a strange rant. While performing his songs, he decided to mix things up and rant about some issues going on with his life at the time. It was so shocking that LA Weekly called the performance a quote, sad spectacle. The singer was reportedly homeless less than a year before his Coachella performance, and Coachella was supposed to be his big comeback. But it was a complete disaster. During the performance, Stone cut song short, asked how long he had to stay on stage to get paid, and went on a rant about his former manager, Jerry Goldstein. The rant against the manager even resulted in a lawsuit for slander because Stone implied he was a thief. Stone then countersued Goldstein for diverting royalties owed to him, and he actually won a $5 million verdict in 2015. Even though he ended up winning this dispute, the spectacle caused long term damage to his reputation. In at number 4, The Cure. This was bad or good, depending on your view of the situation. The Cure headlined Coachella in 2009 and went way over their allotted time slot. Coachella always ends at midnight, that's the cutoff point that the festival will never go over. But while The Cure was on stage and midnight was approaching, the band did not want to stop playing. They continued on to the delight of their fans. However, Coachella was not happy about this, and a little after midnight, Coachella decided to pull the plug on the band so their set would finally end. While the band was performing the song Boys Don't Cry, the festival pulled the plug on the instruments. Then they blasted field lights all over the crowd to let them know it was time to go. Reportedly, the band still kept playing, and some fans rushed to the front of the crowd to hear the final notes of the song unplugged. I'll let you decide if it was a good or bad move. And at number 3, Janet Jackson. The Super Bowl halftime show is one moment a year that millions of people tune in to watch at the same time. People turn off their reality TV programs and reruns of Jeopardy to grab a snack and watch the year's biggest performance. Well, during the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, viewers watched a serious wardrobe malfunction happen that was life changing to say the least. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were performing together when a move went wrong, and Janet's breasts ended up being exposed. Following the incident, the media dubbed Nipplegate, the FCC sued CBS for the live incident, and a $550,000 lawsuit citing indecent exposure for their cause. Janet Jackson was put through the ringer for her part in the whole scandal. As a result, she was uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year and her songs were blacklisted from the radio. Even the next few albums she released following the incident 
was met with negative reviews because of the scandal. After this huge scandal, Janet faced some pretty big setbacks and many people thought that she was permanently banned from the Super Bowl. This could be true, but since it's been so many years, we really can't know for sure. In at number 2, 50 Cent. Back in 2016, rapper 50 Cent got in some trouble while in the Caribbean after saying some colorful language on stage at one of his concerts. It all happened during one of his performances while in St. Kitts. In St. Kitts, the use of profanity in public is illegal, and so when it came to his concert, he was told that he had to refrain from using any adult language while on stage. But during one of his songs, he mistakenly said the word mother effer in front of the audience of 40,000 people, and it was a huge no-no. He was allowed to finish the rest of his set, but he was promptly arrested after the show. In his defense, 50 Cent said that he didn't have a clean version of the song and he forgot to move his mic away from his mouth when he said the word. Because the halftime show was broadcast live, the networks want to make sure that the show is somewhat family friendly, and since 50 Cent has been in a scandal for using profanity in public before, he could be banned from performing just to be on the safe side. And finally, number one, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The Super Bowl seems to be pretty good at creating scandals. Whether it's related to the game itself or the halftime show, there's bound to be some some kind of trending moment during the event. And in 2014, there was a scandalous moment during the halftime performance by the band the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Even though during their performance it looked like everyone was jamming out hardcore and having a good time, it turns out that was all pretty much fake. The band was exposed after it was revealed that they performed with their instruments unplugged and pre-recorded set lists playing over them. After they got exposed, they explained that they pre-recorded their performance as to ensure that nothing went wrong. But somehow, even with those precautions, they still ended up in a bit of hot water with fans. Now they could be banned after this scandal. Though it wasn't major, the backlash was still there and fans might not want to tune in again to see another performance flop, and obviously the NFL doesn't want to see that, so they wouldn't let them back. And at number 10, Adele. Adele shaded the NFL in 2016 when she revealed that she rejected their offer to perform at the 2017 halftime show. In August of 2016, Adele took the opportunity during her show at Las Vegas' Staples Center to set the record straight about if she would be the star of the next year's halftime. And she said it was a hard pass. She said, quote, First of all, I'm not doing the Super Bowl. I mean, come on. That show is not about music. And I don't, really, I can't dance or anything like that. They were very kind, they did ask me, but I did say no. And from that standpoint, I get what she's saying. Adele is known for her iconic ballads, not the insane shows that are generally put on at the Super Bowl. This was not the end though. The NFL came back with their own shady dig, claiming that they never actually offered her the halftime show in the first place. Clearly someone is lying, but either way, that relationship is torn. And at number 9, Jay-Z. Jay-Z is another star who turned down the chance to perform at the Super Bowl halftime show, and he revealed the reason why in a song. In the song Ape Shit, that was made in collaboration with his wife Beyonce, he rapped quote, I said no to the Super Bowl. You need me, I don't need you. Every night we're in the end zone, tell the NFL we're in stadiums too. He also took the time to call out the Grammys as well, as he feels he has not been respected by that organization. The source reported that Jay said no to the 2018 halftime show, which Justin Timberlake ended up doing. But it's clear he's not done with the organization altogether. In 2019, Jay-Z's company, Rock Nation, made a deal to team up with the NFL for a multi-year partnership intended to, quote, enhance the NFL's live game experiences and to amplify the league's social justice efforts. This role means that Jay-Z plays a role in selecting who performs the halftime shows in the future. In the number eight, Rihanna. Rihanna passed up the Super Bowl show in 2019 because she wanted to stand in solidarity with San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick's take a knee movement. Rihanna commented directly on her reasoning for not taking part, telling Bo, quote, I couldn't dare do that. For what? Who gains from that? Not my people. I just couldn't be a sellout. I couldn't be an enabler. There's things within that organization that I do not agree with at all, and I wasn't going to go out and be of service to them in any way. Rihanna usually doesn't comment on things like this, but it's clear she wanted everyone to know the reason that she did not want to perform was because of the NFL. That year, the organization struggled to book a performer, and in the end, Maroon 5 and Travis Scott agreed. And at number seven, Sinead O'Connor. In October of 1992, Sinead O'Connor caused some controversy during her guest spot on SNL. She was brought on the show to be its musical guest, and already people were a little confused by her as she refused to sing one of her songs from her recent album at the time. She instead opted to sing an acapella version of Bob Marley's song. War. It was an intense performance, and she even changed some of the lyrics to specifically mention young people. As the song came to an end and she was wrapping up her performance, she pulled out a photo of Pope John Paul II and tore it up, saying, quote, Fight the real enemy. Sinead's actions caused a huge stir. After her performance, NBC started receiving thousands of angry calls over the following days, and even some celebrities came forward to criticize Sinead's actions. There have already been many scandals in the past when it comes to the halftime show, and the network has been known to get many complaints, so they probably don't want to hire Sinead to perform, even if she was a guest. 
Because of her past controversies, they probably banned Sinead from performing at the Super Bowl. And at number 6, DaBaby. Last year, rapper DaBaby caused a big uproar in the LGBT plus community. He got into quite the controversy after he said some pretty offensive things while on stage performing at Rolling Loud in Miami. While on the stage, the rapper made offensive comments about the gay community, as well as HIV and AIDS, calling it a quote, deadly sexually transmitted disease that'll make you die in 2-3 weeks. He also went on to say some more homophobic things about gay men that also added fuel to the fire. This was a huge scandal at the time, and so because of that and the nature of the comments he made, the people who organized the Super Bowl probably won't want to have the rapper perform at the halftime show, and they have him banned. Maybe not forever, but certainly for now. Halfway number 5, Akon. Rapper Akon once got so mad at a fan that he threw him off stage. And I don't mean he was escorted, I mean he literally picked someone up and threw them. The whole incident went down in 2007 at one of his performances at the Duchess Stadium. A 15 year old fan threw an object at Akon from the audience, and this really made him mad. He had people bring the kid up on stage just for Akon to pick him up and chuck him off it. As a result of the incident, Akon was given a $350 fine and was ordered to complete 65 hours of community service. This kind of behavior definitely wouldn't be tolerated at the Super Bowl. The NFL might think that Akon could react in a similar way if something went wrong, and Akon snapped again, and they probably don't want to risk another meltdown. He probably won't be invited to perform at the big game. And at number 4, Billy Joe Armstrong. In 2012, Green Day was performing at the iHeart Radio Music Festival, and things got heated. According to the band's frontrunner, Billy Joe Armstrong, the show's producers had allegedly cut the band's set time down from 45 minutes to just 25. This obviously didn't sit right with him, and as he watched the timer countdown as he and the band performed, that just made him angry to the point where he sort of threw a tantrum when the band was down to its last minute of set time. Billy kept shouting, one minute left over and over again, and went on to say that he's been around since 88, hinting that since he's been around for so long, he deserves respect. Then in a fit of rage, he took his guitar by the neck and began smashing it on the stage until it broke. He then threw his mic and stormed off stage. Much like Akon's on-stage meltdown, the NFL probably wouldn't want to risk something bad happening on stage, and so the Green Day frontrunner could be on the list of banned celebrities. And at number 3, Eminem. Eminem performed with four other artists during last weekend's Super Bowl show. The show featured performances from iconic hip-hop artists including Eminem, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, and Mary J. Blige. In the middle of the show, while Dr. Dre was playing a piano, Eminem took a knee and put his hand over his head. Many took this as a sign of Eminem's support of Colin Kaepernick's Take a Knee initiative. This is even more controversial because it was reported that the performers were banned from taking a knee during the show, and anti-police language was taken out of many of the songs during the show. Eric Gardner reported on Sunday, quote, The league nixed a plan by Eminem to kneel, Colin Kaepernick style. Eminem has not clarified his intention since the buzz started, but I think it's clear what he was doing, and because he defied the NFL's rules, he will not be asked back to perform. And at number 2, Jennifer Lopez. After JLo and Shakira joined forces during the 2020 Super Bowl, JLo admitted they included a political message in the performance. During the set, JLo's daughter Emmy sang a few lines of Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA with Let's Get Loud. Then at the same time, kids looked to appear in small cages on the field behind a large fence. Some viewers noticed the kids in cages as an apparent reference to President Donald Trump's immigration policy of separating families at the US-Mexico border. After the show, JLo confirmed that was the intention and the whole thing was planned to send a message to the government. She said, quote, All I want my girls, the little girls on stage with me and all over the world to know is how to use their voices and be proud of everything they are. Other people can try to build walls, keep us out, or put us in cages. We are proud to recognize that all of us together are what makes this beautiful country truly great. And finally, number one, Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus is a celebrity who's gone through a massive transformation in her years since becoming a celebrity. She used to be known as the innocent Hannah Montana on the Disney Channel. But as soon as she left Disney, she became Hollywood's wild child because she's known for doing the unthinkable, like twerking on Robin Thicke at the VMAs. Because of all this, she is banned from performing in the Dominican Republic. According to the AP, government officials deem that Miley, quote, undertakes acts that go against morals and customs, which are punishable by Dominican law, and thus she cannot perform in their country. And I'm sure the Dominican Republic is not the only country that feels this way and does not want performances by Miley in their country. Because she's so unpredictable and not family friendly, I would assume she will not be asked to perform at the halftime show. In at number 10, Drake. Drake's 2015 Coachella performance was another that was universally labeled one of the worst ever. In 2015, Drake was the king of hip hop, and fans couldn't wait to see him headline at Coachella. But it was a complete disaster that included appearances from Madonna and Nicki Minaj. That cringy Madonna kiss on stage was one moment I don't think fans will ever forget. 
One website even declared Drake was, quote, the worst headliner in Coachella history. Even crazier, Drake agrees that the set was terrible. When asked about Coachella, Drake said, quote, I took an L for the first time. I just have to reassess what went wrong with my judgment. Even though most people were pretty hard on Drake, a lot of people pointed out that being a rapper at a festival like that is difficult because he didn't have a band to help people stay entertained. In at number 9, and Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion raised some eyebrows with her Coachella performance after she decided to perform a diss track to one of her exes. Near the end of her set, Megan decided to share a new track with fans, which left some fans confused. Over a reworked instrumental to a Wu-Tang remix, she rapped a very personal diss track. From some of the lyrics, we can assume the track was aimed at Tory Lanez. Lanez is the rapper who Megan is in a court battle with after she accused him of shooting her in the foot. In the track, Megan disses the women that this person is hanging out with and claims the only reason this guy is getting any women is because of her. In at number 8, CeeLo Green. CeeLo Green's Coachella performance has gone down in infamy as one of the worst Coachella performances of all time. Green performed at the 2011 Coachella Festival, and his behavior left a lot of fans frustrated. First, he showed up about 30 minutes late to the set, which led to many fans booing him and leaving the stage. When he finally did show up, he only had 20 minutes left for his set. Instead of taking accountability and apologizing, he decided to blame his lateness on the festival. He came to the stage and said, quote, Sorry guys, I just landed. Y'all still gonna party with me? I only have 20 minutes. It isn't my fault. They should have given me a better time slot. He only played five songs before the sound was cut and he walked off stage. The whole thing was just a mess. In at number seven, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. In 2014, Bruno Mars ran the halftime show and decided to bring out the Red Hot Chili Peppers as one of his guests. The band and Mars performed to give it away and everyone loved it. However, during the performance, fans on TV realized that the bass and guitars were not plugged in, making it clear it was not actually a live performance. The band started to get tons of backlash, and people were angry that they didn't play live as they had claimed they would. The bassist later made a statement which revealed, quote, When we were asked by the NFL and Bruno to play our song, Give It Away at the Super Bowl, it was made clear to us that the vocals would be live, but the bass, drums, and guitar would all be pre-recorded. The band's guitarist also doubled down, revealing that every band in the last 10 years has also performed to a recorded track. Because there's way too much room for air with a real live performance. I'm sure the NFL did not like that the band revealed a coveted secret like that. And since that revelation, fans have looked down on the legitimacy of the performances. In at number 6, MIA. MIA made a huge mistake while performing with Madonna at the 2012 Super Bowl that not only cost her career, but forced her to pay up a massive lawsuit. During Madonna's halftime slot at the 2012 Super Bowl, she brought out her collaborators on the song Give Me All Your Lovin', M.I.A. and Nicki Minaj. But the great night came to a crashing halt after M.I.A. flipped the bird at the end of the performance and millions of viewers at home saw. The league was so outraged by the decision that they decided to sue M.I.A. for $16 million. The suit was settled between parties for an undisclosed amount. She claimed the finger was a quote, display of female empowerment through being punk rock. Madonna later commented that she had no idea it even happened until much later, and she was really surprised to learn that it happened. In the end, MIA is clearly never allowed back, and I wouldn't be surprised if she was never allowed to perform anywhere. Halfway number 5, Fergie. Fergie is known for making all of her performances original, but many didn't expect that to be the case when she's singing songs like the national anthem. Fergie made us all cringe when she tried out a new rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, and we all just wanted to make it stop. But that was not the first time a cover of hers went wrong. In 2011, Fergie and the Black Eyed Peas hosted the Super Bowl halftime show, and they brought out special guest Slash during a performance. In between performing Black Eyed Peas songs, Fergie and Slash performed a rendition of Sweet Child of Mine that had fans in uproar. As we know, Fergie likes to put her own spin on classic songs, but this one was not received well. It was the third song in an eight song set list, which Rolling Stone described as the worst Super Bowl halftime show of all time. So I would assume the fans do not want her back. In at number four, themed halftime shows. Back in 1995, the NFL decided to change up the halftime show in a big way. Instead of having a celebrity performer like usual, they worked with Disney to create an Indiana Jones themed show. In 1995, Disney unveiled its Indiana Jones adventure, Temple of the Forbidden Eye ride. And they felt the best place to promote this new ride was at the 1995 Super Bowl halftime show. Disney came on board as the producer of the NFL's chief spectacle, and it was pretty goddamn strange. The 11 minute show was somewhat of a musical theater performance. First, we see Patti LaBelle lip syncing to a random song. Then, Indiana Jones and Marion Ravenwood show up via parachute and have to fight their way through a horde of ninjas. Then, they grab the Vince Lombardi trophy and run away. Then, the performers sing, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? which felt like a strange choice. Thankfully, there was no mishaps during the performance, but we're glad something like that did not ever happen again. In at number three, Billie Eilish. 
Billie Eilish got some major heat after her 2019 Coachella performance, and she owned up to the terrible show in her V Magazine cover story. At the time of her performance, Billie was only 17 and was most likely not ready for a show of that size. Billie said about Coachella, quote, I really resent the things that were surrounding me during that period of time. I had that ruined for me by a person, but that's okay. Billie never clarified who that person was, but we can assume it was her ex-boyfriend, Brandon Quinton Adams. If you're wondering what made it so bad, Billie forgot the lyrics to the song, All Good Girls Go To Hell, started 40 minutes late, ran out of breath, and tripped on stage. Even Billie's fans agree that the show was not her best, and are excited to see what she brings to Coachella in 2022, as she will be headlining the event alongside Harry Styles. In at number 2, Damon Albarn During Billie Eilish's 2022 Coachella headline performance, she brought out a number of guests like Khalid and Damon Albarn. Albarn was brought out to sing Billie's song, Getting Older, with her because he had covered the song in the past. Albarn is best known as a member of Gorillaz and Blur. But it seems that a lot of Billie's fans had no idea who he was, and when he came onto the stage, many fans thought he was actually her dad. Even though Billie made it clear who he was when she brought him out, introducing him as, quote, This man changed my life in a lot of ways, and changed my complete view of what music could be, what art could be, and what creation could be. Even calling him a genius. To make matters worse, when Albarn finally started singing with Billy, many fans pointed out that it seemed like he didn't know the lyrics to the song, Getting Older, which is funny because like I said before, he did a cover of the song. And finally number 1, Saweetie. Saweetie had an unforgettable performance at this year's Coachella after she suffered a wardrobe malfunction. Sweetie was on stage in a matching bikini top and skirt combo. But while she was dancing for the crowd, her shirt moved more than it should have, and she exposed her nipple to the crowd. She seemed to be unfazed and continued singing with Brazilian singer Anita when her top suddenly slipped down. Unfortunately, this is not the first time that she had a wardrobe malfunction. She had one just a few weeks ago at the Oscars. Sweetie wore an incredibly revealing black dress to the Vanity Fair Oscar party, and since she was so exposed, it makes sense that she had a slip up. It seems that someone must have told her about the malfunction afterwards, because when she arrived at the Chateau Marmont in West Hollywood, she had a trench coat over her dress, and she had her hand covering her private parts, which were exposed previously. At number 10, Harmony Corinne. I think it's an unspoken rule that when you're a guest somewhere, you should try to be on your best behavior. One person who really should have followed this rule is director Harmony Corinne, who's best known for the movie Spring Breakers. It was once a time when Harmony made a number of appearances on The Late Show with David Letterman in the mid to late 90s. This was also during a time when Harmony was reportedly on a lot of drugs. Though he was a frequent guest on the show, his appearances just stopped all of a sudden and no one really knew why until 2013 when Letterman revealed the truth as to why the director was banned from coming on the show. Apparently, Letterman caught the director going through Meryl Streep's purse one time and that was just the last straw for the late night host. When talking about this fateful event, Letterman said, quote, I went upstairs to greet Meryl Streep and welcome her to the show. I knock on the door and she was not there. I looked around and saw Harmony going through her purse. True story. And so I said, that's it, put her things back in her bag and get out." End quote. After that, Harmony was no longer welcome on the show and hasn't been back since. Before we carry on talking about these rude celebrities, why not take a moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 9, Hugh Grant. Hugh was once banned from The Daily Show after having a really bad interview that really affected the show's host because the actor was being so rude. John Stewart, the former host of The Daily Show, said in an interview that Hugh Grant was the absolute worst guest he'd had on the show. He spoke about how when Hugh was on to promote his film Did You Hear About the Morgans, Hugh was making a huge scene backstage and was just being really mean and annoying to the people who were working on set. Apparently, Hugh was allegedly going around saying that he had better places to be. He also got really upset about the clip that they played from the film saying, quote, What is that clip? It's a terrible clip. To which John replied telling Hugh to make a better movie. You could really tell that John was fed up with Hugh and his attitude on the show. John went on to say that because of his poor experience with Hugh, he'd never have him back on his show. At number 8, Bobcat Goldthwaite. I think this goes without saying, but don't go setting fire to things. Back in 1994, actor Bobcat Goldthwaite was a guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and during his guest appearance, the actor decided to just randomly set fire to his chair. At the time, Jay thought this was just a spontaneous bit, but in reality, Bobcat came prepared for this as he brought lighter fluid and a lighter that was hidden up his sleeve. Luckily, the other guest who was there that night, Lauren Hutton, was quick on her feet and doused the flame with a cup of water. 
Jay understandably was very unhappy with all this and banned Bobcat from the show. Not only that, but the actor was also charged with arson for the stunt and was ordered to pay over $3,300 in fines, some of which went towards replacing the chair he set fire to. He literally damaged the set and if that's not rude, then I don't know what is. At number 7, Piers Morgan. I feel like when a celebrity asks for something specific, it should be given to them. I'm not talking about anything material like demanding a cup of ice chips or something. I mean a specific request in reference to the way that they're treated. For actor Kelsey Grammer, he made a very specific request when he was doing an interview with Piers Morgan, and when that request wasn't honored, there was a falling out that led to the actor being banned from the show because of the drama. When the actor made a guest appearance on Piers Morgan Tonight back in 2012, he requested that a picture of his ex-wife not be shown. He's willing to answer questions about her, but just didn't want to have a photo of her to be aired. Well, Pierce didn't exactly honor that request, and when a photo of the ex-wife was shown, Kelsey stormed off set. The actor's publicist said that Pierce had to take accountability for his actions because Kelsey was so mad about the situation, but instead, Pierce barred the actor from his show. That was pretty rude of him. At number 6, Gene Simmons. I think we can all agree that Gene Simmons is kind of outlandish. He's a guy with a lot of energy and no filter, so when it comes to interviewing him live, you never know what he might say, but you can only hope that it won't be too offensive. At one point, the singer was a Fox favorite, making regular appearances on their programming where they would discuss hot topics in the world and would share their opinions on things. They liked the guy and liked having him on their show, but after causing a stir during a meeting at Fox and making some rude comments towards some of the other staff members, Gene got banned for life and it was a hot topic of its own. Some of the things that Gene said to some of the women at the network got leaked and it's not something you would want to have said to you, let's just put it that way. After all of that went down, the singer was not welcome back on their programming because they didn't like the way he behaved. At number 5, Sharon Osbourne. Talk show host Sharon Osbourne found herself in some hot water earlier last year after she made some comments about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry that not only caused her to get backlash, but also lose a friend. Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood got into a heated argument surrounding Pierce Morgan's comments about Meghan Markle. During the feud, Sharon backed up Pierce's comments about Meghan Markle's mental health, and this frustrated Cheryl because she didn't like the comments that were being made about those involved. The two got into a very heated debate that ended with a lot of drama, sparking a conversation about Sharon's ideals. She was called a racist, and a number of other accusations came out about how she's used various slurs in the past when talking about her other co-hosts. As a result of this, the network for their show launched an internal investigation, and that ended with Sharon being let go from the show. At number four, Kelly Osbourne. Now we just talked about Sharon Osbourne and her talk show Scandal, but her daughter Kelly has also been in her share of controversies, including one that happened while on a talk show that kind of ruined her career because of a rude comment that she made. During an episode of The View, Kelly Osbourne really missed the mark when trying to clap back at Donald Trump, even though she was trying to diss Trump, and ended up getting in enough trouble herself. Just shortly before this episode aired, Donald Trump, who was at the time only a presidential nominee, was saying offensive things about the Latinx community and how he wanted to deport them. I'm sure we're all familiar with this one. Well, in a very poor attempt at clapping back at Trump's racist comments, Kelly said, quote, If you kick every Latina out of this country, then who's going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? What Kelly was trying to do was defend the Latinx community, but rather than stand up for them, she ended up offending them even more as her remarks were interpreted as saying that the Latinx community is only good for being housekeepers, as depicted in many racial stereotypes. After facing so much backlash and realizing the gravity of her words, Kelly issued an apology saying, quote, I want to start by saying I always take responsibility for my actions. In this particular case, I will take responsibility for my poor choice of words, but I will not apologize for being a racist as I am not. At number three, James Corden. Recently, TV host James Corden found himself in some trouble with fans after his Spill Your Guts segment of his show started facing backlash. Fans were calling for James to take accountability after he made some comments about some Asian foods that he had on the show that some fans thought were offensive. Because the foods that they use in the Spill Your Guts segment are supposed to be ones that you wouldn't eat, the fact that some Asian foods like Balut were used and called quote, disgusting, made a lot of people take to the internet to call for accountability and an apology from James Corden. Apparently James had been making these types of comments about a lot of different Asian dishes on a few occasions, so some people have said enough is enough and even created a petition calling for the removal of the Spill Your Guts segment. At number 2, Mark Summer. When it comes to talk shows, sometimes you can never predict what's going to happen. 
These shows are often used to catch up with a celebrity and just talk about life and whatnot, but sometimes these conversations can turn into brawls when the wrong thing is said, and this is pretty much what happened between Burt Reynolds and Mark Summers in 1994 when they were both guests on Jay Leno's talk show. The two men got into a heated brawl after some jokes were made that offended the both of them. Essentially, Mark Summers made a comment about how he was still married, while Burt at the time was going through a divorce, and it made Burt pretty upset. In retaliation, Burt threw some water at Mark, and that's what sparked the fight. It gets to the point where Jay Leno just can't keep the show together because his guests were fighting so much, and producers even went so far as to bring out pies for Mark and Burt to make it look like this fight was staged. After this, people got talking, and some people came to the conclusion that this brawl was uncalled for, and since Mark started it, he felt the most backlash. And finally at number 1, Ellen. In late 2019, actress Dakota Johnson sat down for an interview with Ellen, and some people see this interview as the one that started this whole Ellen is mean scandal because of how rude Ellen was. During the interview, Ellen berated Dakota about the fact that she wasn't invited to Dakota's birthday party. People saw this whole debate as incredibly unnecessary, but the part that people loved the most was how Dakota shut Ellen down. When Ellen said that she was mad for not being invited to Dakota's birthday party, Dakota in response said, quote, Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. No, last time when I was on the show last year, you gave me a bunch of crap about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. End quote. Dakota was even backed up by one of the show's producers who reassured Ellen that she was invited and that she just didn't show up because at the time, she claimed that Dakota's Malibu party was, quote, a little too far for her. Dakota shutting Ellen down and not being made to look like the bad guy Ellen intended was great for fans, and following Ellen's cancellation, fans started to realize just how how rude Ellen was. At number 10, Kanye West. Most people see Kanye West as a little too extra. He's caused scandals like his VMA interruption with Taylor Swift, his comments about George W. Bush, as well as many other instances that have just rubbed people the wrong way. To add to that, he's reportedly very hard to work with. During filming of Anchorman 2, Kanye came on set for a brief appearance in the film, and though he played a small part, he left a big impression on the cast and crew, and it wasn't positive. Apparently, after Kanye wrapped on set, he refused to leave. He could have just gone home after he finished his scenes, but he decided to stick around. That's fine if you want to stay and watch other people's performances, but that's not exactly what Kanye did. Instead, he hung around set blasting music so loudly that it disrupted filming. People tried to get him to just leave, but he wouldn't. I think it's safe to say that if a third Anchorman movie were to happen, Kanye just would not be welcomed back. At number 9, Leah Michelle. Leah Michelle was exposed in 2020 for her Hollywood mean streak and for her terrible on-set behavior. This all came out following a tweet from former Glee co-star Samantha Ware, where she let the world know how horrible it was to work with Leah. The actress is now described as, quote, callous, rude, mean, and even a diva. But following Samantha's exposure of the Broadway star, other people have come forward with their own testimonies regarding Leah and her mean streak. There have been stories of Leah's microaggressions, but also stories of her spitting in craft service food that she doesn't like, refusing to work with people because they didn't know her middle name, requesting reshoots because she didn't like her costume, disrespecting other castmates, and having crew members apologize on her behalf, and so many other frustrating tidbits that just really show how rude and entitled she's been known to be. No one wants to work with her after learning about how much of a nightmare she can be on set. Before we carry on talking about the celebrities who are just the worst people to work with on set, why not take a moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Julia Roberts. Even though Julia Roberts seems like a nice person, it turns out that she's a nightmare on set. Ironically, she's almost always cast as nice and endearing characters, but there's seemingly much more to Julia than meets the eye. Apparently, she's known to have a pretty bad attitude on set, which can make working with her an unpleasant experience. In 1991, on the set of the Peter Pan film Hook by Steven Spielberg, Julia earned the on-set nickname Tinker Hell as a play on her character Tinkerbell. She earned this moniker based on the production staff's perception of the actress. Apparently, during filming, she would constantly show up to set late, and even when she was on set, she would lock herself in her trailer for hours on end. She also reportedly treated people badly, and she would never apologize for her mean actions or behavior. Julia was truly the opposite of the pixie she was playing. At number 7, Mike Myers. Does anyone else remember the Cat in the Hat live action film from 2003 starring Mike Myers? I certainly do. It was very cringy, but in a good way, since I was a kid back then and I found everything unbelievably hilarious. 
I enjoyed that movie as a kid, but one person who didn't enjoy it was the cat in the hat himself, Mike Myers. After the success of Austin Powers, Mike was set to bump up his comedy and star in a production based on one of his old characters. But before that was all carried out, the actor and the studio got into some debates and there was legal trouble. It was all just unnecessary drama. Well, they both ended up reaching an agreement and it obligated Mike to star in the Cat in the Hat movie. He never wanted to sign up for that and he really made it known how badly he didn't want to be there. According to people who worked with him on set during filming of the Cat in the Hat, Mike was very rude and dismissive and he refused to talk to anyone. He became a hermit and a diva apparently and this whole experience and subsequent film were all so bad that Dr. Seuss's widow said that she would never allow Hollywood to make another movie based on one of Seuss's books again. At number 6, Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts has had quite a few on-set feuds with co-stars. She's had drama with Gabri Sidibe, Ariana Grande, and Evan Peters, but the biggest feud that she's had was with Leah Michelle on the set of Screen Queens. According to sources, Emma Roberts and Leah Michelle had one strong attribute in common, and that was the fact that they were both divas, so while they were working together, they butt heads with each other quite often. Apparently, their fighting got so bad while filming, actress Jamie Lee Curtis had to step in and mediate the hostile situation between Emma and Leah because she was so fed up with their constant bickering while they were trying to work. It was also reported that the actresses would constantly have mean girl moments, making rude and catty comments towards each other almost daily. Rumors of this feuding between them were pretty common in entertainment news while Scream Queens was still in production, showing that things never really died down between the two actresses. It seemed like Emma just caused a heck of a lot of drama with a lot of people on set. At number 5, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf has really been going through it in Hollywood. He kind of has a bad reputation now because of the conflicts that he's been in, the latest of which got him fired from a movie. Because of his bad attitude and clashes on set, the actor was fired by Olivia Wilde from the upcoming film Don't Worry Darling. It was announced in late fall of 2020 that Harry Styles would be replacing Shia in the film, and now we know that it was due to Shia's alleged bad behavior as people have cited that the actor was quote, not an easy guy to work with. It was alleged that there was some kind of conflict between him and Olivia Wilde as well, and the fact that other cast and crew members didn't like working with him, Shia was let go. Getting fired is always a negative thing, but in Hollywood, when a lot of your work involves other relationships with other actors and having connections, having a bad experience that was enough to get you fired can ultimately burn that bridge and result in you having less work. At number 4, Ben Stiller. A lot of people think of Ben Stiller as this super funny guy in Hollywood, but just because someone seems great in the public eye doesn't mean that's how they really are behind closed doors. It seems as though Ben Stiller is a nightmare in disguise because he's a tough guy to work with and he causes a lot of trouble on set. People who know or have worked with Ben in the past have exposed some of his bad behavior on set and it's kind of shocking. According to those who worked with him on the set of the film Tropic Thunder, he was very controlling and mean to just about everyone there. He even reportedly had a meltdown on set when someone brought him his Diet Coke and it didn't have exactly two ice cubes in it. He even had someone fired because they didn't put enough sugar in his coffee. On top of that, Ben even forced his assistant to stand out in the parking lot in his designated parking space, even though it already had a sign saying that it was reserved. And to make matters even more hectic, Ben also freaked out on a female assistant he had, going so far as to refuse to come back to set until she was replaced by a male assistant. If all of this madness happened on just one film set, who knows what other shenanigans have gone on elsewhere with him. At number 3, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase is known for being in National Lampoon and the show Community, but is also known around Hollywood as being kind of a jerk and starting drama with the people that he works with. There are a bunch of articles, books, and interviews of people talking about their experiences with the actor and how mean he can be. There are even stories in the book Live from New York that detail the times Chase has been mean to staff, writers, interns, and other hosts. Will Ferrell and Bill Murray are among those who have taken a disliking to Chase because of the way that he's treated others. Will Ferrell has said that he doesn't like Chevy because of the way that he treats some female staff members. And Bill Murray and Chevy Chase even got into a brawl backstage of SNL back in the day where they said some pretty hurtful things to each other because they were kind of comedy rivals on the show. 
Chevy just doesn't get along with everyone and he said it's because his fame went to his head, but something tells me that's not the only reason why he starts drama. At number two, Bill Murray. Bill Murray already has a pretty bad reputation in Hollywood for his poor on-set behavior, so it's no surprise to me to find out that he's had some serious drama with one of his castmates on the set of Charlie's Angels. While filming the movie, Bill Murray was said to have antagonized actress Lucy Liu. When watching the film, you'd think that they were all good friends and on good terms, but in reality, that was quite the opposite. The film set was sort of a hostile environment that caused Bill to take a disliking towards Lucy. Turns out Bill would insult Lucy's talent and acting ability and on one occasion even said, quote, I get why you're here, you've got talent, but what in the hell are you doing here? You can't act. Apparently the harassment and bullying got so bad at one point that Lucy tried throwing punches at Bill during one scene because his insults got so bad. This antagonizing went on for the entire duration of the production and Bill kept on berating Lucy about her presence on set and calling her unprofessional as well. This drama was just so unnecessary. And finally, at number one, Sharon Osbourne. Talk show host Sharon Osbourne faced a lot of backlash last year after making comments about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Sharon and her former co-host Cheryl Underwood got into a pretty heated argument surrounding Piers Morgan's remarks on Meghan Markle. During this feud, Sharon backed up Pierce's comments about Meghan Markle's mental health, and this really frustrated a lot of people because many felt as though what was being said was going a little too far. As a result of the remarks that Sharon made, she was called a racist, and a number of other accusations came out about how she's used various slurs in the past when talking about her other co-hosts on the show. As a result of this, the network that they worked for launched an internal investigation to look into the allegations against Sharon, and that ended with Sharon being let go from the show. And number 10, her skincare scam. After Millie posted a video to her Instagram pretending to use a range of her skincare products in a tutorial video, many people would come for the star and point out that by the end of the video, she still looked like she had makeup on and she didn't even use the products to remove her makeup. After the video was met with some large amount of controversy, Millie would take to Instagram to apologize to her fans by saying, I'm still learning the best way to share my routines as I get to know this space better. I'm not an expert. I thought that doing a quick video representing application of my personal process for the night was okay, but that's not what was conveyed. She then added that she understood and appreciated all of our feedback and encouraged us all to share her thoughts. Despite her asking her fans to share their thoughts, she would then disable the comments on her video. Now, Millie hasn't been the first celebrity to lie about using skincare products, which is why a lot of the internet came for her as they felt like she should have learned from other celebrities' mistakes. But considering Millie was still a child, you should all go easy on her because she's truly doing amazing things here at such a young age. And number nine, her friendship with Drake. Fans for years have been saying Millie's relationship with Drake has gone way too far. So it's no secret Millie has had a good relationship with Drake. While Drake being 17 years older than her, people have been divided when it comes to their friendship. With some people believing that their relationship is harmless, others have pointed out if they were 14 and they were friends with a 31 year old rapper, their parents would be very uncomfortable about it. Many people on the internet have even come for both stars. Many have stated it made Millie appear like she could act older and what she was actually doing was turning a blind eye to not notice Drake's odd behavior befriending someone who is 17 years younger than him. When Millie first stated that she was Drake's BFF who texted all the time, I think we all raised our eyebrows as it sounded wildly inappropriate for the adult rapper to have a relationship with any sort of teenager, especially one who is not in the music industry. While many fans have pointed out a number of red flags, despite Millie calling out their friendship, she fails to see the problem with the attention she is receiving from older men and that's just something that's not sitting right with a lot of the internet at this moment. And number eight, David Harbour. When fans came forward to label Millie as a massive diva due to her having a bit of a mean streak, she also has been known to be pretty disrespectful to her Stranger Things co-stars. One incident people weren't particular about was when she had an incident with 47 year old actor David Harbour who was doing an interview with Millie. During the interview, David was trying to be sweet when he decided in the middle of the interview to compliment the young actress for for her acting and general persona. However, instead of allowing her co-star to give her a little moment, she decided she would rather be the center of attention and started to make faces before finally interrupting David in the middle of his speech. Millie even hopped out of her chair to physically get David to stop 
his speech. David, being a good guy he was, just brushed it off. However, when he tried to continue speaking, Millie just continued on with her bizarre antics and David just decided enough was enough and he smiled the rest of the way through the interview and he definitely seemed annoyed with her overall antics and we all noticed. And number seven, the group interviews. Even the younger actors on the show Stranger Things have to deal with Millie's rude behavior on a number of different occasions, especially in interviews. Multiple online videos can show Millie talking over or interrupting the other cast members of Stranger Things when they did press tours or interviews together. As the interviews go on, you can notice the actors look understandably frustrated. While the actors will remain professional and they seem to get along with each other, it's hard to imagine that they're truly okay with Millie's rude behavior, especially when she cuts them off in the middle of their sentences. So the question still remains, why does Millie think it's okay to treat her fellow co-stars with such little respect and why does she always try to cut them off so frequently? During the interviews, it seems like she likes to cut one of her co-stars off more than the others, especially when it comes to Sadie Sink. Millie has definitely liked to cut her off a little more than the Rest. Despite the two claiming to be best friends off set, Millie's abrupt cutoff has reached a point where in one interview, another one of the show stars, Caleb McLaughlin, had to even ask, hey Sadie, do you want to talk? And number six, the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards. I think we've all noticed that a lot of the Stranger Things cast has had enough with Millie and her odd, frankly rude behavior, especially when she chooses to overstep her boundaries during interviews as she tries to rush in and speak every second. Her co-star, Caleb, has also been receiving the end of Millie's tendencies to interrupt people. And it's made a lot of people come for the star, especially when it came to an incident that happened at the Nickelodeon Awards ceremony back in 2018. When Caleb, Sadie, and Millie went on the stage at the awards ceremony to accept the Stranger Things Award, the cameras would capture Millie shoving Caleb aside when it was her chance to address the audience. She decided she didn't want to wait for Caleb to step aside and instead she took over the microphone as though there was no one around her and her moves ended up making Caleb almost stumble and fall in front of thousands of people and he definitely did not look impressed with the star. The overall move was really disturbing as well. We wish that she would have done better and just waited for her co-star to finish his speech rather than rushing things. At number five, we have eating pop rocks. When Millie Bobby Brown gagged while eating Pop Rocks during a really funny BuzzFeed video, I think we all had a good laugh at the star. While her and her two co-stars in the video were playing with a bunch of toys and candies from the 90s, we really enjoyed watching them obsess over our 90s favorites and it was such a throwback moment that it made us all miss the 90s. However, when the staff brought out the Pop Rocks, we were all shocked at the fact that Millie had no idea what they were. And you could definitely tell that she never tried them before and it was really clear that she had no idea what they even were. So Caleb and Gatton graciously explained to her what the candies were supposed to do when they came in contact with her tongue. However, Millie decided to put too many candies in her mouth way too fast and at one point she almost choked on the candy and then she looked way too scared to even enjoy the candy for what it even was. The entire video was actually such an embarrassing moment for the young actress as she actually didn't know any of the retro toys that were presented to the group and the fact that she didn't know what Pop Rocks were and the way she did them was insulting to all 90s children. And number four, the Flat Earth Conspiracy. When Millie was just 14, she posted a video on TikTok where she addressed that the Earth was flat and a lot of people started to troll the star for her beliefs. When the star took to her social media to express her views on the shape of our planet, she definitely wasn't shy on speaking out about her beliefs. After sharing her thoughts about the Earth being flat, a lot of people started hate on the young actress. Many have even started to tease her on her own opinions. Now, a lot of the comments were actually pretty funny to read. Even though her views were expressed on the topic a long time ago, fans have continued to poke fun at the star for her beliefs. In 2018, Millie took to her social media for a live Q&A and one fan then asked Millie if she thought the earth was flat. Millie would answer by saying, I mean, think about it. I don't even know, I think I am. What do you call it? Um, a flat, I think they call it a flat earther. So obviously she struggled with her words. Now jumping to 2022, Millie has admitted she doesn't believe the earth is flat any longer. However, her statement was definitely contradicting because she would go on to have doubts by saying, although I've never seen it, you know, when you're on the plane and sometimes you can see it, the curb, 
I've not seen that yet. And number three, scared of bungalows. Even though Millie's plays such a scared nothing character on the show, Stranger Things, the star is secretly scared of bungalows because they really freak her out. While Millie appeared on the late night show with Stephen Colbert, she would say that they really freaked her out because it's a house with no stairs. And then she said, you have no place to escape. You're on one level. I don't know, I just feel safer with stairs. I don't run up the stairs fast as I feel I could fall. But I like stairs around me. After that statement, every horror movie fan on the internet would definitely start to hate on Millie. So you think because Millie is working on a horror sci-fi show, then she would know the number one rule when it comes to horror movies and that would be never run up the stairs. It's funny that the star thinks that having stairs around her will keep her safe and sadly the reality is that running up the stairs to avoid danger could only land you into some more trouble. Just take the Scream franchise for a second into consideration every time one of those characters tried to escape from the man behind the mask by running up the stairs, it always ended badly. But if she feels safe with stairs, then stairs it is. And number two, the time she met Audrey Hope. Not only is Millie's behavior odd with her fellow cast members, but she also happens to be quite dismissive in real life. And in one incident, she ended up showing us all how dismissive she really was when she was extremely rude to a fan and fellow cast member. When Audrey Hope, a young actress, uploaded a video to the internet, she would share an awful story about Millie. And it would cause the internet to come for Millie because we couldn't believe how dismissive she actually was to someone who wanted to enter into the industry. Now, if you don't know who Audrey is, she worked as an extra on the season of Stranger 2. Her performance was so good as an extra that they even invited her to the premiere event with the entire cast and crew of the series. When she got invited to the event, Audrey was really excited and she really hoped she would get the chance to meet Millie. And since Millie entered into the industry, she always thought Millie was some sort of idol and she was inspired to one day be a great actress as Millie. When Audrey spotted Millie at the event, she gathered enough courage to go up to her and ask for a photo. However, it didn't go as planned as Millie took one look at her and walked off without even saying no. Instead, she told her she'd be back to take a photo and Audrey ended up waiting a long time for her to come back. However, Millie never showed and the internet was definitely not having it because she could have just said no, but instead she made her fan wait for hours just for a hope that she could grab a photo with the star. And at number one today, we have her fashion. Now, since Millie entered into the industry, many people have been quick to call out the star's fashion as they believed it's too mature for her age. One particular look that the internet was not fond of was her outfit to the 26th annual Screen Actors Guild. At the age of 15, the actress was one of the first megastars to hit the red carpet at the event, and Millie could be seen spotting a trouser and coat dress that was designed by Louis Vuitton. And it was truly a stunning look. The look was created by Louis Vuitton's team to help bring her vision of high fashion to life. While Millie's look was a fresh take on the red carpet, it would cause the star and her team to quickly come under fire as many felt like the look was inappropriate for a teenage girl. On social media, Twitter users would then come out to say, Millie Bobby Brown's stylist should be sacked. She's just 15 years old, but looks 30 at the SAG Awards last night. So disturbing. Millie would then come out to defend her look by reminding critics that she has the right to choose what she wants to wear. Now it's funny how people can say stuff about the star being too young and you think because the star was only 15 at the time people would stop criticizing her but some people, mostly adults, felt like it was okay to insult her which it definitely was not. So while you are entitled to your own opinions, maybe remember that sometimes things are left better unsaid. So if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Number 10, Kanye West ranting about Kim on Skid Row. Kanye West definitely isn't known for being the most normal celebrity there is, but there was one moment in 2021 where the rapper appeared particularly tone deaf, even for him. Following a split from Kim Kardashian, Kanye had that period of time where he seemed to want to publicly ask her to take him back, including, well, giving a speech on Skid Row. Skid Row is the infamous downtown Los Angeles neighborhood known for its abject poverty and common violence. The rapper made an appearance during their Thanksgiving food drive for the less fortunate with Reverend Troy Vaughn. But while giving what was supposed to be an empowering speech to the homeless and poverty stricken people who wanted to sit down for a hot meal, Kanye decided that that was the time to go on a lengthy rant about how God wants him back with Kim Kardashian. While in front of groups of people waiting for food, Kanye made the incredible 
incredibly confusing statement of quote, if the enemy can separate Kim Ye, there's going to be millions of families that feel like that separation is okay. But when God brings Kim Ye back together, there's going to be millions of families that are going to be influenced to see that they can overcome the work of the separation of trauma the devil has used to capitalize to keep people in misery while people step over homeless people to go to the Gucci store. Even for Kanye, a billionaire telling one of the largest unhoused populations in the US that God would reconcile him with his estranged billionaire ex-wife to help their cause is a bit much. Number nine, Ariana Grande licking donuts. Back in 2015, the former Nickelodeon star was the picture of innocence and was quickly becoming America's sweetheart. But things took a weird turn when surveillance footage displayed Ariana licking a tray of donuts in a small California bakery and remarking, quote, what the f is that? I hate Americans. I hate America. Apparently her excuse for licking the donut was she was frustrated because of the rates of childhood obesity in America. But like, girl, you walked into a bakery. What were you expecting? Carrots? After the onslaught of backlash and a police investigation, the singer issued a video apology, quote, seeing a video of yourself behaving poorly that you had no idea was taken is such a rude awakening that you don't know what to do. I was so disgusted with myself. Well, it's definitely not the worst thing a celebrity has done. It's definitely one of the more confusing and out of touch things. I wonder if any of those donuts got sold to some unsuspecting customers afterwards. Number eight, the Kendall Jenner Pepsi commercial. Ah, uh, the famous Pepsi commercial that made the rounds back on the internet back in 2017. While America was embroiled in protests and the exposing of the police force for brutality and blatant racism, Kendall Jenner thought that was the right time to crack open a cold, crisp Pepsi and tell everyone to just get along. While the rest of the world was fighting for equal rights, Pepsi released a commercial that put the reality star at the forefront of a pretty cringy moment where she was at the front of an unspecified protest citing peace and love with signs saying, quote, join the conversation. Kendall even bravely handed a Pepsi to a police officer in full riot gear. He drank it and the entire crowd of protesters cheered and laughed and hugged in glee. Yay for equality. One YouTube commenter even even stated, quote, I find it amazing how they managed to offend so many groups of people and yet say absolutely nothing at the same time. Obviously, the internet was enraged, as at the same time this video dropped, protesters were being taken in unmarked vans by the FBI, and people were rightly angry at Pepsi for trying to profit off of the mass suffering of others. Kendall also swiftly apologized for appearing in the video, saying, quote, I felt so f***ing stupid. The fact that I would offend other people or hurt other people was definitely not the intent. Number seven, Justin Bieber and Anne Frank. While on tour in Amsterdam, Justin Bieber made a stop at the Anne Frank house back in 2013. While there, he wrote a message in the guest book that lit the internet on fire. The then 19 year old Justin wrote, quote, truly inspiring to be able to come here and was a great girl. Hopefully she would have been a believer. It provoked fierce online criticism for Bieber who was accused of making the museum dedicated to the horrific experiences of Jewish people during the war about himself. However, the museum itself defended the star, although they did add the comment that his comment, quote, wasn't very sensible. A spokesperson for the museum defended Bieber on the BBC, stating, quote, he's 19. It's a crazy life he's leading. He didn't mean bad. And also, it's nice that he made the effort. He didn't have to come. And I mean, for what it's worth, and if you know me, I'm the last to defend celebrities, I kind of get where he's coming from. If Anne Frank were allowed to live now, where she would be a normal girl doing normal teenage girl things, she would have been afforded the luxury of obsessing over a pop star like so many kids do. But sadly, she wasn't. And I think that may have been the point that Bieber was trying to make, albeit in a very tone deaf manner. Number six, Sam Smith having a meltdown. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's that celebrities love to complain from their ivory thrones. Take Sam Smith, for example. During the strict times of the stay at home order, they took the opportunity to take pictures of themselves crying while sitting on the steps of their multi million dollar mansion, with the caption about having a meltdown because they were forced to stay at home. Meanwhile, New York City had to bring in emergency ships just to house the amount of bodies that had been overwhelming crematoriums to the point that they couldn't house any more victims of illness. Poor Sam Smith and their sad little life. Number five, Gal Gadot's Imagine. Another top moment from the mess that was 2020. Although she wasn't the only celebrity to take part in this weird out of touch video, Gal Gadot was the spearhead of it all. In a mashup with tons of different high profile celebrities who all sang John Lennon's Imagine while 
while locked inside their mega mansions, the moment was supposed to come across as heartwarming. Instead, people just saw these celebrities as not understanding the severity of what was happening to everyone around the world. Millions of people were dying, and Gal Gadot thought it was a good idea to preach peace and love while inside her heavily surveillanced mansion with a swimming pool and private chef. But like I said before, it wasn't just her. She also got Will Ferrell, Amy Adams, Natalie Portman, Mark Ruffalo, and Zoe Kravitz, among many others, to sing the song as well. Number four, James Corden in a rat suit singing with Camila Cabello. Listen, I'm fine with celebrities doing their weird little things so long as it's over there where I don't have to see them. Kind of like a spider in my room that stays on the other side of the room and very far away from me. But when they decide to inconvenience people going about their day, nah, that's when it gets weird. Like for instance, one Los Angeles morning when James Corden and Camila Cabello decided it was a good idea to stop traffic in a city that's already known for insane gridlock and sing the song Can't Hurt You as a promotion for the new Cinderella movie that Camilla stars in. James Corden was in a rat suit singing the song while everyone blocked traffic. Someone online even joked, quote, your husband just sliced the tip of his finger off making dinner and it won't stop bleeding. You're rushing to the emergency room and this happens. What you doing? And then like the video of James hip thrusting at a car in a rat costume. Number three, Logan Paul in the Japanese forest. Okay, for this one, I'll say Logan definitely got pretty swift recourse after he published a video on his YouTube channel of him and his friends traversing through a forest in Japan that is known as being a place where people go to end their own lives. He and his friends had come across a body of an individual who had done just that and decided to film the body and themselves looking shocked while staring at it. The move was swiftly remarked as extremely insensitive, especially since it was monetized, showing that Paul got financial game off of the immense suffering of others. His career was basically temporarily ruined over the video, although he's back now with a very successful podcast, albeit it's a bit more grown up. Number two, Gwyneth Paltrow's life is harder than everyone else's. Gwyneth Paltrow is the queen of pissing people off. While she had a long history of saying things like, quote, I'd rather die than eat cheese from a tin, she also managed to upset basically every mom by moaning about how her life is harder than everyone else's. Back in 2014, she told E! News, quote, I think it's different when you have an office job because it's routine and, you know, you can do all the stuff in the morning and then you can come home in the evening. When you're shooting a movie, they're like, we need you to go to Wisconsin for two weeks. And then you work 14 hours a day. And that part of it is very difficult. I think to have a regular job and be a mom is not as, of course there are challenges, but it's not like being on set. I think she failed to mention all the babysitters and full-time nannies and chefs she can afford to hire to care for her kids while she's off making millions of dollars. Number one, Kendall Jenner and her cucumbers. Kendall Jenner once again has made herself known to be completely out of touch with reality on the new episodes of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Kendall insisted on cutting a cucumber herself while her mom seemed worried and asked her to ask the chef to do it. But she said no because cutting a cucumber is quote, pretty easy. Which it is, but not for her apparently. The model absolutely could not figure out how to properly cut a cucumber to the point where Chris stepped in and told her to get their in-house chef to do it for her. People online were calling it pathetic and tragic, which it absolutely was. Starting us off at number 10 is Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy. There has always been a lot of speculation around this affair ever since rumors started circulating that the president had an affair with Marilyn while he was married to Jackie Kennedy. These rumors heightened after her iconic, sultry performance of happy birthday to the president. I don't think we can ever forget that one. For many years, it was all rumors and no confirmation, but in 2013, a biography came out and confirmed these claims to be true. In the biography titled, In These Few Previous Days, The Final Year of Jack and Jackie, it claimed that Marilyn once called Jackie to tell her that John had promised to marry her. The biography also claimed that he was having an affair with multiple women, but Jackie was most concerned about the one with Marilyn because she knew it would cause a huge and very heavily documented scandal. Now, of course, whether the biography is even true, we will never know. So. I guess we take this one with a grain of salt. Moving on to number nine is Ashton Kutcher and Sarah Leal. Ashton was married to Demi Moore for six years at the time that the scandal had unfolded in front of the entire world. His administrative assistant, Sarah Leal, had come forward and alleged that she had intimate relations with him during an interview with US Weekly. Demi spoke about the affair in her 2019 memoir called Inside Out, where she said she found out about the cheating scandal through a Google alert. When she confronted Ashton about it, she said that he had admitted to it right away. The heavily documented 
undocumented scandal was the catalyst for the breakdown of their marriage, with the two of them finalizing their divorce in 2013. Ashton never personally addressed the scandal, except for in 2017 when he admitted that his name was splashed around every gossip magazine for being an adulterer. Swiping our number 8 spot is Hugh Grant and Elizabeth Hurley. It is one thing to get caught in a cheating scandal in Hollywood, and it's another thing when it includes someone getting arrested. In 1995, the actor was arrested in Los Angeles for misdemeanor lewd conduct in a public place with a Hollywood sex worker. He was caught having this affair after he paid her to perform acts on him. We'll leave it at that. The actor ended up pleading no contest and paid a fine. But what made matters worse is that he was married to Elizabeth Hurley at the time, so the whole scandal was flooding the media, including his mugshot. But despite the fact that he cheated, she stayed with him for five years in hopes to fix their marriage. However, it didn't work out and they split later down the road for good. And at number 7, Beyonce. Beyonce and Jay Z are an incredibly private couple, but their darkest secret was exposed to the world when Beyonce released her album Lemonade, which told the story of her husband cheating. One song referenced a woman named Becky with the good hair, which caused tons of speculation about who this person was. A woman who worked with Jay-Z named Rachel Roy was first thought to be the woman, but she denied it. Then in 2017, Jay-Z released his album 444, which confirmed that he cheated. In this album, he apologized to Beyonce and their children for his mistake. He also spoke about the mistake in an interview later. Cruising into spot number 6 is Jude Law and Daisy Wright. This affair was one of the biggest ones in Hollywood history. One, because it was so documented, and two, because it involved someone close to their family. I am talking about the actor and his fiance at the time, Sienna Miller. Back in 2004, they were engaged and seemed to be a match made in heaven. But it wasn't long before the scandal surfaced in 2006 and revealed that Jude had been cheating on her with their nanny, Daisy. She was actually the one who came forward with the affair and gave out details of their entanglement, which apparently had gone on for some time. Jude did not bother denying it. He ended up coming clean to the affair and released a public apology to Sienna, saying that he deeply regrets it and that he is ashamed of his actions. Sienna broke off the relationship right away, but then they got back together and tried to rekindle things. It actually wasn't until 2011 that they officially called it quits. Halfway through our list at number five is Ethan Hawke. Back in 2003, reports revealed that Ethan and Uma Thurman were ending their marriage and that their nanny, Ryan Shawhughes, was the reason for it. At the time, Ethan heavily denied it, but then he went on to date Ryan and then later marry her in 2008. And yes, they are still together to this day, so I will save you the time from going and Googling it. This might be the one time that they actually went on to be with the nanny forever. But Ethan has always stuck to his guns, saying that they did not fall in love with each other until after after he ended things with Uma Thurman. He defended himself and said, I know a lot of people imagine some kind of Sound of Music type love affair, but the truth is by the time Ryan and I were falling in love, it had been a long while since I had employed her. I don't buy it. But hey, maybe you do. Who really knows the truth? Let me know in the comments uh, if you believe it or not. <laughs> Moving into spot number four is Meg Ryan and Russell Crowe. Meg was in the prime of her career at the time, being the leading lady of romantic comedies, all while being married to Dennis Quaid. They got married in 1991, but then in 2000, she was exposed for having an affair with her co-star at the time, Russell. They were filming Proof of Life together at the time, and they were spending a lot of time together, which apparently led to this affair. She immediately took the heat for the affair, and every Everyone was heavily criticizing her to a point where it started to affect her career and roles that she was no longer getting. She tried speaking up about it and said that Dennis had actually cheated on her in their relationship in the past, but that it just was not made public. But people didn't care. She was still the only one to get bad press for it. Her and Dennis finalized their divorce not long later in 2001. Russell Crowe didn't get any freaking heat, eh? Cool. Sure. Number three, Leanne Rhymes. This affair was not exactly unique. In fact, it's a story so common in Hollywood that it borders on cliche. Actors Leanne Rhimes and Eddie Cibrian were co-stars who met on the set of a Lifetime movie called Northern Lights. They immediately hit it off and the flirting began. But the kicker was that they were both already married at the time to other people. But hey, in classic Hollywood fashion, they didn't let that stop them and not long after meeting, they were photographed having dinner together and the rumor mill did the rest. After extreme press coverage of the affair, both Leanne and Eddie decided to make it official and separated from their respective spouses, all to be with each other. They eventually ended up tying the knot in 2011. 
But the story doesn't entirely end there, and a few years later, Eddie was caught cheating on Leanne at Wendy Williams' 50th birthday party. But she claimed she's unfazed by the whole thing and does not seem to mind the fact that he flirts with other women. You know what they say, sometimes how you get them is how you lose them. Taking over number two is Jesse James and multiple women. Once again, the scandal just involved more than one person, so I can't really pick just one. He got married to Sandra Bullock in 2005, but they went their separate ways just five years later in 2010, after he was exposed for cheating. Articles called him a serial cheater as a handful of women came forward with proof that he was cheating throughout his entire marriage. It all started when In Touch magazine revealed intimate details of his affair with model Michelle McGee. From there, two other women came forward sharing their details of having romantic entanglements with him during his marriage. One was an exotic dancer and the other was a photographer. Sandra filed for divorce immediately and Jesse didn't even bother denying the claims, he actually called it a part of life. He told Daily Mail, I quote, Yeah, I did cheat on my wife. Yeah, I stood up and took accountability for it and apologized. In general, both women and men cheat. It's part of life. Well, it doesn't have to be part of life. But okay. In the number one spot is Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. We could never forget this affair, probably because the two of them went on to get married and create a family together, even though it came from infidelity. Brad was married to Jennifer Aniston at the time, but that did not stop him from cozying up with another woman. He met Angelina on the set of Mr. and Miss Smith in 2004, which is where the two of them got close. A little too close. The affair ended up getting exposed in the public eye, and even though Jen and Brad had split, Brad jumped straight into the relationship with Angelina. Well, because he was already having the relationship. People did not agree with it and even criticized Angelina for bragging about it. During an interview in 2008, she talked to the New York Times saying, Not a lot of people get to see a movie where their parents fell in love. Well, I hope you also told your kids that their dad was married at the time that you guys fell in love during this movie. I'm very passionate about this one because I love Jennifer Aniston. Rachel Green? Oh, we fell in love on this set, isn't that beautiful? No, because dad was married to another woman, actually. Anyways, in at number 10, Robert Kardashian. While Kris Jenner was married to Rob Kardashian, she was caught having an affair with a friend named Todd Waterman. Robert knew this at the time of their divorce many years ago, but Kris didn't reveal her infidelity to the world until she released her memoir in 2011 called Kris Jenner and All Things Kardashian. In the book, she kept the name of the man private and called him Ryan, but the man was later identified as Waterman. Kris later revealed that the biggest mistake in her life was divorcing Rob. Todd also regrets his part in the affair. Waterman told the Daily Mail in 2012, quote, There's several things I regret and it's definitely the pain that it caused Robert and the children specifically. I think it affected Courtney the most. I know she was definitely affected and I always felt bad about that. And at number 9, Will Smith. Will and Jada Smith are the ultimate Hollywood power couple, but even they have problems. While they were going through a rough patch, Jada started an entanglement with another man. Apparently Will had known about this relationship since it happened, but the world found out when the man that Jada cheated with, named Alcina, revealed it to the world. He said, quote, I totally gave myself to that relationship for years of my life, and I truly and really, really deeply loved and have a ton of love for her. Speaking about Jada. Alcina claimed that Will knew about the relationship and gave them his blessing. At first Jada denied the claims, but later decided to speak about it on the Red Table Talk. On the show, Jada said there was a point in time that her and Will were thinking of separating. At this point, she started this relationship. But in the end, Will and Jada ended up back together. And at number 8, Regina Lasko. David Letterman admitted to cheating on his wife in front of the entire world. In 2009, Letterman got on television and told his unsuspecting viewers that he was being blackmailed. Apparently, this person knew that Letterman was cheating on his wife with his co-workers and wanted $2 million to keep the secret to himself. Instead of giving in, Letterman admitted it to the whole world. At the time of the cheating, Letterman had been married to his wife for 6 months, but they were together for 20 years prior. It was later revealed the blackmailer was a producer on Letterman's show, and the woman Letterman was cheating with was dating this producer. And spot number 7, we have Tiger Woods and multiple women. Honestly, there's no nicer way of saying it, and the whole scandal included more than 10 different women. It all started in 2009 when the National Enquirer reported that Woods cheated on his wife with a nightclub owner named Rachel Uchitel. I think that's right. Media outlets reported not long after 
after that, his wife had attacked him with a golf club after finding out the news and finding proof in his phone while he was sleeping. After it was made public, more than 12 women came forward and claimed they had relationships and flings with him, sharing text messages and voicemails as proof. He ended up admitting to his infidelity and issued a public apology. Because of the scandal, he actually lost several endorsements and had to take a break from tournaments. He and his wife got divorced in 2010. In at number 6, Emma Thompson. Kenneth Branagh and Emma Thompson married in 1989 and worked together on various projects throughout their marriage. At one point, rumors started swirling that Kenneth might be cheating with his Mary Shelley's Frankenstein co-star, Helena Bonham Carter. The details of the affair were not spoken of publicly, but in a 2013 interview, Thompson confirmed there was an affair. She also added she'd made peace with Helena. In 2018, Thompson told The Telegraph that one of the most famous scenes from Love Actually where she found the necklace was based on reality. At that time, she just learned of the affair and used her emotion for that scene. She said, quote, I had my heart very badly broken by Ken, so I knew what it was like to find the necklace that wasn't meant for me. I've had so much bloody practice crying in a bedroom than having to go out and be cheerful, gathering up the pieces of my heart and putting them in a drawer. Number 5. Robin Thicke 2013 was really not the greatest year for the Canadian American singer. His hit song Blurred Lines was criticized for being what is now called lyrically problematic, not to mention his notorious performance with Miley Cyrus at the 2013 Video Music Awards where she first started twerking. But what really hurt his relationship was when rumors began swirling about him possibly cheating on his wife of 9 years, Paula Patton. A photo surfaced of Robin with his hand on a woman's backside while they were attending a party. The trouble was that there was a mirror right behind him revealing exactly where his hand was and it didn't look good. But instead of explaining his behavior, he said, quote, my only comment about the so-called scandalous photo would be that my wife and I are perfectly in love and very happily married. He went on to call Paula his greatest love of the century and the most functional, dysfunctional marriage in Hollywood. Well, he might have got that last part right. Paula filed for divorce a year later and even filed a restraining order in 2017, alleging that he was physically and emotionally violent towards her. And at number 4, Tori Spelling. The old saying goes, how you get him is how you lose him. And that was proven in this relationship. While Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott were dating other people, they started cheating on their partners with each other. Eventually, Dean and Tori started dating and even got married. But then years later, rumors started to swirl that Dean was cheating on Tori. Dean actually admitted to it and even checked himself into rehab. The whole thing was shared on the couple's TV show so viewers got to see exactly what was happening. The pair managed to work through it all and are still married today. Coming in hot at number 3 we have Mick Jagger. This one has been a big debate ever since the news broke because the cheating allegations came straight from the nanny. Some people believed her story while others just thought that she had different motives. So let me know what you guys think. Back in 2002, nanny Claire Houseman alleged she had a sexual relationship with Mick Jagger. She spoke with the Daily Mirror at the time and went into details about the time that they hooked up, claiming that it happened in the kitchen, which was just 30 feet away from the bedroom that he stayed in with his wife, Jerry Hall. She even went as far as saying that she had Mick in the morning and then he had his afternoon delight in the afternoon with his wife on the same day. Not a good look for Mick, obviously, that's for sure, and not her either. But Claire was firm on the fact that she had no regrets to this hookup, but admitted that she did feel bad for Jerry at the time. How kind of you to feel bad for me, even though you're banging my husband. Thanks so much. In at number two, Iggy Azalea. The messy split all started with a prank war, if you can believe it. The Lakers were caught up in a prank war, and in the midst of that war, Nick Young revealed he was cheating on Iggy. The whole thing was even caught on tape. Apparently behind closed doors, Nick Young and Iggy worked it out and he managed to convince her that it was all a lie, which she decided to believe and they kept dating. But then security cameras caught Young in the act and Iggy saw him bringing girls into their home. To add insult to injury, it came out that Young was even expecting a baby with his ex-girlfriend, Kiana Green, which was conceived while he and Iggy were together. Iggy ended up dumping him on Twitter. And finally, number one, Sienna Miller. Jude Law and Sienna Miller were one of Hollywood's hottest couples until they were caught up in a cheating scandal. Even worse, Jude Law cheated with the nanny. The couple was engaged for eight months when the nanny claimed that she and Jude Law were having an affair. Jude Law ended up admitting to the cheating and apologized to Sienna in an open letter. 
He said in part, quote, there is no defense for my actions, which I sincerely regret, and I ask that you respect our privacy at this very difficult time. The pair stayed together for a few years, but they split for good in 2011. At number 10, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey isn't the nicest person ever. She's had several run-ins with the paparazzi, which have not gone over well. She's had some pretty bad relationships with others, and she's known for being a complete and utter diva. But there's one incident in particular that really just exposes how mean Mariah can be. There was a lawsuit from one of Mariah's former assistants, which accused her of a number of horrible things. The former assistant alleged that the singer peed on her, ridiculed her body, and called her a handful of pretty rude names. Her former assistant said that she was hired by the singer to be on call 24-7 and assisted both Mariah and her manager at the time. Though she was paid a salary of $250,000 a year, this wage couldn't cover up the horrible things that she was put through by Mariah. But her case wasn't the only one up against the singer at the time. While this case was being disputed, Mariah had just settled one with her former manager who cited breach of contract, harassment, and unpaid wages. Just because you pay the people a lot of money doesn't mean you get to treat them like trash. Now before I carry on with the list, I would like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far because your likes really help to support the channel and we love to see it. At number 9, Jennifer Lopez. This probably doesn't come as a shock to many, but it turns out that JLo isn't very nice. A lot of people have said that she's a real diva and others say that she's just plain rude and she's done a number of things that have rubbed people the wrong way. Apparently the singer slash actress is very picky about who may or may not speak to her and for those permitted to address her, they're not allowed to make eye contact. There have even been reports that she flat out refuses to comply with scripts. This has happened on a few occasions, most notably during filming for a Fiat commercial where they needed to hire a double for Jennifer simply because she just didn't want to do certain things for the shoot. On top of that, she doesn't have a good reputation with a lot of people who's worked with her either. She's said to have completely ignored the people who were remodeling her house. She's gotten a cleaning lady fired for having asked for an autograph and she even refuses to talk to in-flight staff and pilots on flight and instructs her assistant to talk to them for her. And to make matters worse, even though her staff do so much for her, including communicating for her, they don't get paid very much for their time. Even though she may seem super cool on the surface, she's a little sour in real life. At number 8, Gwyneth Paltrow. A lot of people seem to really dislike Gwyneth Paltrow for some reason. Though she's never really done anything horrible to people directly, it is alleged that she's so disliked in Hollywood because she comes off as pretty pretentious, egotistical, and privileged. People don't really see Gwyneth as the average person or as someone that they can relate to, which a lot of people seem to find off-putting. The Goop founder seems to like flaunting her wealth and materialistic things and makes it seem like it's something that everyone else has or can afford. For example, her Goop website's list of must-have clothing pieces and other things include things that cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars, which not a lot of people can relate to having. On top of that, she came from a wealthy family, so being someone who's always been rich, she doesn't really know how to humble herself around those who haven't been as fortunate as her. People also don't like how she comes across as self-centered as she seems to always talk about herself and how fit she is and how great her lifestyle is. She also has a diva attitude. She's been known to slam Michelin star restaurants and if you know what that means then you know she's got an attitude to do something like that. And to make matters worse, she's been known to demand that people clean and dry the shower at the gym after someone's used it because she quote, can't touch somebody else's shower water. Yeah. She just has a lot of diva energy and can come across as quite rude, so I can understand why not everyone wants to be her friend. At number 7, James Corden. A lot of people don't like James Corden. Celebrities and regular old Joes like you and me just can't seem to get along with the late night host and there's a few reasons for this. Turns out that he's actually pretty mean in real life and this persona that you see on TV is all just an elaborate ruse. In reality, James is arrogant, rude, and a huge diva. There are a bunch of stories that paint James as a mean person. Firstly, he was once part of a group of people who advocated for paying late night writers less money. Yeah, you heard that right. He's also been known to use a good old do you know who I am line quite a number of times and he's even reportedly told someone that he could buy them if they didn't do what he wanted. There's a lot of problematic energy to unpack there, but that is a whole other video. On top of that, there's been incidents of fans catching James being mean to his wife and letting his temper get the best of him at times. 
A lot of people say that he only acts nice in order to butt kiss his way to the top, and he doesn't care who he takes down in the process. But I think people are starting to catch on to this ruse because more and more people are starting to dislike him. Just ask Twitter. At number six, Amy Schumer. It seems like Amy Schumer doesn't really care about what people think of her. In a way, that can be a good thing because you learn to live your life for yourself, but it can also give you an attitude and prevent you from thinking about your actions and how they can impact others. An example of this comes from an incident from back in 2018 where Amy full on stole a comedian's stand up set. Amy was at a comedy club and up on stage, an up and coming comedian was doing one of his first long sets, and obviously this was a pretty big deal for the guy until Amy ruined it. She walked into the venue and went to the manager to ask if she could steal 10 minutes of stage time because she wanted to practice her new set. Because the other comedian just started on stage, the manager said no, so Amy hit back with the, but I'm Amy Schumer. Like that's really gonna do something. After getting refusals left and right, she decided to take matters into her own hands and marched up on the stage and just took over his time for a few minutes. I know Amy is a big timer, but come on, you have to remember what it was like to be up and coming and that kind of behavior is just rude. At number 5, Katherine Heigl. A lot of people don't like Katherine Heigl because of how rude she is. She's known in the film industry for being pretty mean and having a diva attitude. She's allegedly mean to people on set, has high demands, and just has a very bad overall attitude. She's known to be quite critical of her roles and the material that she's given to work with, and she even said this when she withdrew from the Emmy nominations because she said that the material she was given for Grey's Anatomy didn't warrant an Emmy. That is certainly disrespectful to the writers because for someone to say something like that implies that the writing wasn't good enough to please people, whereas the people at the Emmys thought it was worth an award. And on top of that, winning this kind of award looks good for the team, but Catherine obviously didn't think of that. She only thought about herself. The actress is known to make ridiculously high salary demands, and she's apparently been doing this since before she became a big name in the industry. She's reportedly hired and fired a lot of publicists and assistants over the years, so she really sounds like quite the diva and a horrible boss too. Because of all this, directors and Hollywood execs just don't want to work with her anymore, and honestly, I can't really say that I blame them. At number four, Michael Phelps. Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is often referred to as the best swimmer of all time, but it seems like his aquatic skills are really the only thing he's got going for him since apparently he's got a pretty bad attitude and is pretty rude in real life. Michael has done some bad stuff in his life, so people already don't think that highly of him as an individual. Back in 2014, he was arrested for driving under the influence, and speaking of under the influence, Phelps has also been caught with drugs before. Already, this isn't good for his image because being an Olympian, people have a lot of eyes on you. Phelps was reprimanded for his drunk driving and was suspended from swimming for six months, but other than that, this scandal was kept pretty under wraps. Now, if only they could have put that much energy into Jakari Richardson. On top of this swimmer being a felon, he's also known to not be a team player. Apparently, he hides himself away from his other teammates when at competitions like the Olympics instead of being with his team to support them. You would think that being at something like the Olympics, you would want to soak up all that team spirit, but no. Michael wants nothing to do with his team and instead flies solo. Kind of mean if you ask me. At number three, Jared Leto. You may like Jared Leto on screen, but off screen, he's kind of a jerk. There's even a list online that tallies up all the reasons that make him a bad person. And if something like that exists, then you know something's up. Some of the reasons listed as to why Jared sucks so much include the fact that he's been caught being mean to fans, he's rude to reporters during interviews, and he's offended the trans community after winning an Oscar for his performance in Dallas Buyers Club, and not mentioning the trans community in his speech, as well as undermining the struggles of the trans community after joking about his appearance in character. Jared has also admitted to lying during interviews whenever possible for absolutely no reason, and people found his joker antics on the set of Suicide Squad to be a little mean because of the pranks that he would play on people as well as the gifts that he would send to the cast and crew. Most of the allegations against Jared and his attitude are pretty minor, but add them all up and you get someone that you might not necessarily enjoy having around. But what do you guys think? You still want to be his friend? At number two, Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera may have the voice of an angel, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she is one. Turns out she has a bit of a dark side and a handful of people have experienced it. Other than being shady at Lady Gaga during their 2008 feud, where she called her some unpleasant names and said, quote, I'm not quite sure who this person is, to be honest, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, end quote. She's also had some other rude encounters with more of her peers. When working on the set of her various gigs, she's reportedly always late, 
holds up production and never apologizes for delaying production. She also reportedly has some beef with Adam Levine while working on The Voice, and they would bicker constantly. Christina is also known to be an absolute diva, and working with her seems to be a nightmare because sources say that she's very rude and demanding of her household staff and treats her staff poorly, insisting that they are on call 24-7. Christina also has had feuds with Pink, Mariah Carey, and even got mad at Mickey Mouse once. Yeah, she got into a heated argument with Mickey Mouse when she was at Disneyland in 2014 for her birthday. She wanted to take a picture with the mouse, but he was going on break, so instead of being an understanding person, she pulled the do you know who I am card. I mean, how can you do that to Mickey? What did Mickey do? And finally, at number one, Bruce Willis. Actor Bruce Willis has had a great career making great movies and basking in fame, but it seems as though he's not all that great in real life. Apparently, Bruce is a nightmare to work with as he's gotten into a number of conflicts with others on set and people just really hate working with him. Before Die Hard launched his film career, he was brought into stardom after working on the show Moodlighting alongside his co-star Sybil Shepard. Back in 2005, Shepard told sources that there came a point where her relationship with Bruce became really toxic and they clashed a lot on set. There was reportedly constant bickering and it was just a really bad working environment. But of course, Sybil isn't the only one to have clashed with Bruce while working together. Filmmaker Kevin Smith has also had his troubles working with Bruce while filming the 2010 film Cop Out. He told sources that though he once saw Bruce as his hero in past productions, that opinion completely went out the window, saying that working with Bruce was difficult. When speaking out about their time together on set, Kevin said, quote, He turned out to be the unhappiest, most bitter, and meanest emo B word I've ever met at any job I've held down. And mind you, I worked at Domino's Pizza. What an awful experience. End quote. Now, I I just wonder if something triggers this horrible behavior or if he's just always like this. Coming in number 10 today, we have Will Smith. If you're a fan of the show Fresh Prince of Bel Air, then you know that Janet Hubert, who played the beloved character Aunt Viv, mysteriously vanished from the show at the end of season 3. And then in an interview with Atlanta radio station in 1993, Will Smith would try to call out his co star by saying, I can't say straight up that Janet Hubert wanted the show to be the Aunt Viv, a Bel Air show. Because I know she's going to dog me in the press. She has basically gone from a quarter of a million dollars a year to nothing. She's mad now, but she's been mad all along. She said once, I've been in the business for 10 years and this snotty nosed punk comes along and gets a show. No matter what, to her, I'm just the antichrist. Then later, Janet would come out to criticize the show and she would express her dislike for Will Smith by explaining how difficult he is to work with on set and she even swore that she would never appear in a reunion episode episode when she said there will never be a reunion with an a-hole like Will Smith. He is still an egomaniac and he has not grown up. This constant reunion thing will never happen in my lifetime unless there is an apology, which he doesn't know the word for. Number 9. Emma Roberts. Back in 2013, Star Magazine would report that Emma Roberts was a nightmare to work with on the set of the show American Horror Story. Emma, who played a movie star named Madison on the program, allegedly on season three, the star's behavior has become so intolerable that her co-star and actress, Gaborey Sidibe, who played Queenie, called Roberts out for her odd behavior by telling the actress to cut her attitude and stop being rude. An insider would then also tell tell the magazine that Emma's behavior was so bad, she even started to act like she was above everyone else on the set. And the magazine would also state that the feud between the two actresses erupted due to Emma's diva-like behavior on the set, as Emma was complaining about the tiniest things and she even refused to speak to certain crew members. While it seems like Emma was on the outs with one of her co-stars and some of the crew members, she was getting along well with the creator, writer, and producer, Ryan Murphy. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video? So far so don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming number 8 we have Millie Bobby Brown. Back in July, Millie Bobby Brown started to make headlines everywhere after she decided to diss the Stranger Things writers in an interview with The Wrap. In the interview, Millie would discuss her interests in some of the gruesome changes occurring within the Stranger Things universe. One particular change would involve the show's creators getting rid of main characters by making them pass away. As Millie believes the cast of the characters has grown too much throughout the run of the series. And when she was looking around at the fourth season's premiere, she noted she didn't realize how large the cast had gotten. She also added that she thinks the show's creators
creators are too sensitive. Get rid of characters before she stated, we need to have a mindset of Game of Thrones. Kill me off, they tried killing David off, and then they brought him back. The Duffer brothers then responded to Millie's statement of calling them sensitive sallies by saying that she was hilarious before adding that they explored all options in the writing room and they don't want to make their show depressing. Number 7, Johnny Depp. After Amber Heard destroyed Johnny Depp's career, after he won his life back in 2022, you would think the actor would be on his best behavior. However, before his trial, there has been reports that Johnny had really odd behavior on set. And back in December, it would be reported that during the filming of Jean de Berry, where he plays Louis the 15th, Depp was extremely rude towards the director and co-star Mywin Lebasco. An actor, Bernard Montiel, would be the one to disclose the rumors during a French talk show called Don't Touch My TV Set back in October. The actor would reveal that Johnny and the director clashed throughout the entire set and that Johnny had been reportedly falling back into his old habits by saying, I've heard some noise from the shoot, very serious stuff. So Depp is an excellent actor when he comes on set, except sometimes at 6 in the morning, the crew is ready and nobody turns up. So of course, Mywin, who is the director, gets angry and the next day, she's the one who doesn't turn up. And then you got Johnny and she's not there. It's finished over this week, but it's going very, very badly. They don't get along at all and they're screaming at each other the whole time. Number six, Amber Heard. It's clear that the word celebrity has definitely gotten to Amber Heard's head because while she was in the UK filming the scene for a crime thriller called London Fields, it said that the actor threw a huge tantrum on the set that brought the production to a temporary standstill. A source would then tell the Daily Mail that there were some people watching the shoe outside. Then Amber came out to film and the actress got visibly upset about the onlookers, particularly at an individual who was watching. The source then said right in the middle of the scene, she stopped and said, how am I supposed to do this when all I can see is that guy in my eyeline? Then after Amber was done throwing her tantrum, the crew was forced to set up a screen so Amber could film her scene without any distractions. Number five, Shia LaBeouf. So we all heard the rumors about Shia LaBeouf's behavior on the set of Don't Worry Darling. While Livia Wilde has claimed that Shy was making Florence Pugh feel uncomfortable while they were filming scenes due to his odd behavior on set, Shy would quickly deny Olivia's claims and say that he actually quit the film, which would cause Olivia to come out and double down on her claims that she fired him by saying, my responsibility was towards her. I'm like a mother wolf. Making the call was tricky, but in a way, he understood. I don't think it would have been a process he enjoyed. He comes to his work with intensity that can be combative. While Olivia went on to note that she would love to see Shy evolve, she would also say that Shy is a great loss to the film industry because he's so incredibly talented and he's unable to work due to his poor behavior. Later, Olivia would even address Shai's behavior by saying, he has a process in some ways, seems to require combative energy, and I don't personally believe that it is conductive to the best performances. Number four, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase used to be one of the busiest and best loved comedy actors around. However, somewhere along the lines, the tides would turn after he burned multiple bridges and became difficult and combative to work with. While Chase is known for being portrayed as a nice guy, behind the scenes, Chase has a reputation as being one of the least pleasant men in Hollywood to work with. The problem, according to his peers, is that Chase is very difficult to be around because you don't know what to expect when it comes to the star's actions. When the star decided to return to SNL after leaving, he ruffled everyone's feathers in the process. What made matters worse is that the actor even directed his brand of cruel humor at Terry Sweeney, who was SNL's first openly gay cast member, and by all accounts, Chase threw a slew of homophobic jokes surrounding Terry. Then after Chase was forced to apologize to Sweeney, Terry would say, he was really furious that he had to apologize to me. And it was just awful. He acted horrible to me. He acted horribly to everyone. And while many fans and crew members and co-stars have called out the actor on his poor behavior, it's clear that the actor doesn't even care, and he's even even stated so. Number three, Cameron Diaz. While Cameron Diaz became a rising star thanks to her role in the film Charlie's Angels, the star's air rising antics have cemented a reputation of the actress as being a spoiled star. While Cameron was working on the film Sweetest Thing, a source would claim that Cameron became so 
demanding that she needed her underarm shaved and she even had her personal assistant do it. When they said she noticed between takes that she had some underarm stubble. Instead of going back to her trailer, you know, to shave it herself, she lifts her arms high in the air and made her assistant do the demanding task right there in front of 200 extras. The source would then even claim that while filming, the actor messed up an easy line in a script 20 times just because she didn't like the scene. And after she kicked up a fuss to the director, she was able to get the line changed and then she bragged to her co-stars on set that she knew the director would do it her way. Number 2. Joaquin Phoenix When Joaquin Phoenix made an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, things would get incredibly awkward after Joaquin talked about how much fun he had on the set. Jimmy then decided to surprise the actor with a blooper that was sent over by director Todd Phillips that would show that the film was everything but a good time. In the video, it would show Joaquin cursing out the Joker cinematographer, Lauren Cher, while trying to film a scene. In the video, you would see Joaquin saying, you know, just the constant whisper. Just shut the F up, dude. I know you started the effing share thing. Larry, you think it's so effing funny making fun of me. I'm an effing diva. It's not even an insult. Cher, really? She's a single actor, dance, fashion icon. How is that an effing insult? F, I can't do this, man. The actor was then visibly shaken by seeing the footage broadcasted on national TV, and it's clear that he thought he would get away with his poor behavior, but then he got called out by Jimmy Kimmel. Joaquin would then note that he was embarrassed by his actions, and sometimes movies get intense because you're a lot of people in a small place trying to find something so it can feel intense. And coming in number one today, we have Lindsay Lohan. When Lindsay Lohan was working on the set of Glee, her second day on the set wouldn't go down as the star's finest hour. Sources on the set would then give E! News exclusive details about Lindsay's guest appearance, which would include the actress being incredibly late to the set, and the production even had to send out a car to pick her up and bring her to the set. A source would then even say Lindsay was a total nightmare yesterday, as she was three hours late in the morning, and when she did finally arrive, she didn't want to be there, she did not want to work, and she had not memorized her lines, and she kept disappearing so no one could find her. E! News would also also then claim that the crew members on the set were so less than thrilled by Lindsay's antics that they even gave her the nickname of that girl for adding that she rubbed them all up the wrong way by being disrespectful to everyone else's schedules. In at number 10, Gal Gadot. Imagine if celebrities singing from their mansions could fix this widespread panic. That's probably what Gal Gadot's first thought was the day that she decided to have a bunch of celebrities sing Imagine by John Lennon into their cell phones. Hey, you'll join us. And the world will be as one. Oh god, that little smirk that she does at the end just says it all, doesn't it? Look how pleased she is with herself. On the plus side, instead of bringing the world together for one big kumbaya song, they instead united us in hatred. It was the only thing on the internet that people as a collective agreed was about as unnecessary as a DVD rewinder. That's a really dated joke. As a result of her trying to comfort her fans, Gal ended up feeling the full brunt of the Twitterati who threw a Gal Gadot is over party upon watching the tone deaf video. In at number 9, Demi Lovato. Back in mid-April, Demi Lovato came under fire for allegedly having a fake Instagram account that she was using to bring down Selena Gomez. The tweet showed screenshots as well as Demi going live on her fake account, which apparently proved that it was indeed her. The canceller wrote on Twitter saying, Demi Lovato's finsta being exposed to reveal her obsession with bringing down Selena proves how disgusting she is. Hashtag Demi Lovato is over party. This account continued to plead her case for canceling Demi by adding more conspiracies to Demi Lovato's stands, making fake accounts to mess with the details. Specifically, there was one that claimed they personally edited the Demi post, but that's a weird angle to take because if you're a fan, why would you implicate her into this whole mess? Although Selena aside, Demi has publicly bashed other female artists, which just adds to the idea that she is, well, a fake feminist. In number 8, RuPaul. Fans of RuPaul's Drag Race were appalled after its namesake became a controversy that suggested that he was more behind the times than they initially believed. The show was created to be a forefront to celebrate the LGBTQ community, but RuPaul's comments put all of that progress into reverse. During an interview with The Guardian writer Decca Aikenhead was questioning RuPaul about the contradiction between his playful sensibility and the militant stance that he has on the transgender movement. The writer noted that RuPaul seemed to pick his next words very carefully, but still said that he probably wouldn't have admitted a transgender woman like Peppermint if she had already 
already started her gender affirming surgery. He went on to say you can identify as a woman and say you're transitioning but it changes once you start changing your body. It takes on a different thing. It changes the whole concept of what we're doing. In at number 7 Tory Lanez. Canadian rapper Tory Lanez whose real name is Daystar Peterson recently gained mass popularity throughout this pandemic by constantly doing Instagram live sessions. His show was called Quarantine Radio and featured a ton of content that broke the community guidelines of Instagram. That being said he was still crowned the quarantine king by his followers. With clout around his name now we saw Tory hanging around with the likes of Kylie Jenner and Megan Thee Stallion. Which brings us to what Tory is being exposed for and cancelled for right now. Megan was in the car with a friend Tory and a member of his security team driving through an LA neighborhood. Apparently an argument took place in the car that resulted in Megan deciding that she was going to just get out and walk to where she was staying. I guess it was just really close to where she was and she didn't want to be in that car anymore. However before she could do so Tory allegedly shot her in the foot. Well not allegedly she got shot in both feet and there's proof of that since y'all ho so worry about it yes this Tory shot me you shot me Either way, Meg calling Tori out led to many of his fans turning on him and thus another celebrity was cancelled. In number 6, Terry Crews. First and foremost, let's begin with the tweet that Twitter decided was the breaking point for Terry Crews in his career. Towards the end of June, Terry tweeted, If you are a child of God, you are my brother and sister. I have family of every race, creed, and ideology. We must ensure Black Lives Matter doesn't morph into Black Lives Better. Many advocates for BLM were furious with Terry for even tweeting this because it felt reminiscent of the All Lives Matter counter movement, which was viewed as a way of delegitimizing the Black Lives Matter movement across the United States. Francesca Ramsey even commented on his post and said, Terry, what in the actual hell? This is the very definition of a straw man argument. Why would you suggest that a movement created to advocate for the prosecution of cops and citizens responsible for racially motivated killings could somehow morph into we're better? The point that she's making is that demanding black equality is not the same as black supremacy, as suggested by Terry's tweet. In number 5, Doja Cat. At the start of the pandemic, Doja Cat was upset that she had to stay in her home and therefore she was spouting off about how weak the virus was. I mean, weird flex, but okay. I believe she said it could be fixed with a little mucinex, tea, and a cat nap. Huh? <laughs> Comment if you got that. However, what really started the Doja Cat is over party was allegations that she had participated in a racist chat room. First, let's check out the original tweet that wanted her cancelled. This Twitter user said, Why Doja Cat is being cancelled? She was an active member in racist chat rooms and was known for being anti black. She made a song mocking police brutality. There was also a clip that someone had recorded of Doja right smack dab in the middle of an alt right video chat. The bizarre thing with this one is that despite her claims that she was never part of this chat group, there was an interview that she did in 2019 with Paper Magazine where she clearly clearly stated that she was obsessed with a chat room that she couldn't name. That was the chat room. In number 4, Kanye West. Kanye West is one of the few celebrities that are so rich and famous that he's almost immune to being cancelled. Back when he released his album titled Jesus is King, Kanye was quote unquote cancelled by music critics because the album received praise from Trump. Once Kanye started to run for the 2020 presidency though, that's where the real cancel culture started to come out. People were accusing him of trying to sabotage the election and even further condemned him when he became emotional at his rally. I mean he was talking about an extremely sensitive topic and one that was close to his heart, but his ramblings made many worried that he may actually get elected. In another failed attempt to cancel Kanye, he ignored his critics and spoke about how it was racist for people to assume that he was swaying black Americans from voting for Joe Biden. In number 3, Chris D'Elia. D'Elia was cancelled and had been accused of grooming and attempting to solicit nude photographs from underage girls. A woman named Simone tweeted out a screenshot of her alleged interactions with Chris, which began a thread of other women sharing their interactions with him as well. The stories were all pretty horrific considering that they were allegedly all underage at the time that Chris had sent the messages to them. However, in response to having his name dragged through the mud on Online, Chris told TMZ, I know I have said and done things that might have offended people during my career, but I have never knowingly pursued any underage women at any point. Chris then goes on to say, All of my relationships have been both legal and consensual, and I have never met or exchanged any appropriate photos with the people who have tweeted about me. Either way, you cancelled. In number 2, Cardi B. Similar to what happened with Demi Lovano, Cardi B woke up one morning to discover that Cardi B is over party was trending on Twitter with a claim being that she too had faked an Instagram account. The accusation was that Cardi B was using the Finsta to throw shade at other entertainers in the industry. This apparent fake account had been used to bash the likes of Ariana Grande, Lil Kim, Meg Thee Stallion, and Doja Cat, all of which have very dedicated fan bases that were quick to cancel Cardi when they believed that she was behind it all. Although Cardi relented that the whole thing was just dumb and in a statement about the cancel cancellation rumor she said, Let me make this clear, I am not a 15 year old girl that does fake Instagrams that talk about celebrities. I have a whole life, a whole kid. I hope you have a whole kid. Just to f***ing feed my kid it takes me about 35 minutes, an hour to bathe her and do her hair, then I gotta do my own f***ing thing. I don't got time to do that sh 
a lot of bleeping in there. Apparently she didn't do it. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Amber Heard. This was perhaps one of the biggest cancel culture moments of the year thus far. The war between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard has gone on for many years, but for the majority of the time, Depp was always painted as the bad guy. When Heard was exposed as a domestic abuser in his $50 million lawsuit, we got to hear all the insane things that she had done to him. A change.org page was started as well that wanted her removed from Aquaman 2, and with over 480,000 signatures, they are almost at their goal. If she does indeed get removed from the project, it's safe to say that this will go down in history as one of the biggest wins for the cancel culture mob. In at number 10, Lana Del Rey. The beginning of the end for Lana Del Rey started with a letter that was a question for the culture. At the start of the letter she posted, Lana said, Now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camilla, Cardi B, Kalani, and Nicki Minaj, and Beyonce have had number one songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, f cheating, etc. Can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if the relationship is not perfect, or dancing for money or whatever I want, without being crucified or saying that I'm glamorizing abuse. This letter came after she was criticized for being anti-feminist and glamorizing abuse in her most recent album. However, this letter led to her being cancelled by the general public on Twitter because the majority of the artists that she mentioned were of color. Which is why we saw the very punny hashtag, if you will, of Lana Del Racist starting to trend on Twitter. She did clarify later on that that post was not meant to be racist and that she loves all of those artists, but the haters just weren't having any of it. In at number 9, Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star's cosmetics company has brought in hundreds of millions of dollars and according to Forbes, he is now one of the most powerful figures in the industry. Star first rose to fame when his makeup vlogs on YouTube became very popular. From there, he went on to launch his own cosmetics line, but before that though, he was a modestly successful MySpace musician for a brief period of time. However, now that he is intertwined with all of the drama happening in the beauty community, he's being bombarded with hatred. Um, rightfully so. Cameron Lester called him and Shane Dawson out for using him as their token black friend for videos, and from there it just got worse. Shane and Jeffrey's troublesome friendship really came about when Shane wanted to document Star in what would be called the beautiful world of Jeffrey Star. Following Cameron's video, Jeffrey left him a voicemail and denied his allegations against him. The voicemail was leaked to drama channels and contributed to the negative way that would soon erupt after Shane acknowledged the rumors about his role in the feud between Charles Westbrook and Star. In at number eight, Leah Michelle. Something that adds to the pressure of filming is who you have to work with. If you're working in a toxic environment day after day and the person bullying you is the star, this can have some nasty outcomes. Leah Michelle, for example, has been accused by several people for being an absolute nightmare to work with. Her co-star Matthew Morrison appeared via Zoom on FUBAR Radio's Access All Areas and was asked about Leah's bullying and he seemed to get visibly uncomfortable. He immediately attempted to downplay the accusations and shift topics by saying that bigger issues are going on in the world right now. which. He's not wrong, but this is also something that we need to discuss. Here's a prime example of why the cast has had such a terrible time following the show. I think that whatever went on behind the scenes was kept hi very hidden from the public. They play these cheerful high school kids, but in reality they were all just adults with demons. Now with Matt not acknowledging the accusations made against Leah and covering for her, it only discredits what these people have said about the former Glee star. In at number 7, Brian Adams. It's safe to say that Brian Adams will always remember the summer of COVID-19. I hope someone gets that joke. The 60 year old Canadian singer stirred a ton of controversy after having to cancel a three night stint of shows in London. In the tweet he said, Tonight was supposed to be the beginning of a tendency of gigs at the Royal Albert Hall, but thanks to some bat eating, wet mark, animal selling, virus making greedy bastards, the whole world is now on hold. Okay. Now, regardless of where the coronavirus came from, it's tweets like this that are causing a violent energy, if you will, towards Asian Americans. Oddly enough, Adams got more annoying when he tried to spin this tweet into an advocacy for a vegan diet. This really upset a lot of people, and rightfully so, and one user even commented, did not have Brian Adams tweets racist bullshit as a 2020 moment, but here it is, right before our very eyes. In at number 6, Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Hudgens has had some major issues with her fans after departing from her once innocent Disney image. Her fans loved her in High School Musical, but when she started doing films like Spring Breakers, it seemed like she was trying too hard to break that image. When the lockdown started happening, she got herself into even more trouble while doing some Instagram live streams with her fans. Her fans were asking how she felt about the quarantine, and Hudgens said, Even if everybody gets it, like, yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? 
At that point in time, no one really had any idea when these lockdowns would be lifted. You could clearly tell that she was annoyed by the inconvenience of needing to lock down to protect the sick and vulnerable. It's like, oh, sorry, Vanessa. But th this kind of selfish behavior was frowned upon by many, believe it or not, including whatever fans that she had left. She did try to salvage her career by tweeting this reply that said, hey guys, I'm so sorry for the way I have offended anyone and everyone who has seen the clip from my Instagram live yesterday. I realized my words were insensitive and not at all appropriate for the situation our country and the world are in right now. This has been a huge wake up call about the significance my words have now more than ever. I'm sending safe wishes to everyone to stay safe and healthy during this crazy time. No mention of the, it's like inevitable that everyone will die. That, that's my impression of Vanessa Hudgens drunk on her Instagram live feed. In number five, Jenna Marbles. Jenna has been on YouTube for a very long time and after multiple videos of hers blew up, she really began garnering millions of subscribers. 20 million to be more precise. Although in a video titled A Message, Jenna addressed the controversy of her older content. She apologized for the video that she made impersonating Nicki Minaj in 2011 where she donned blackface and went on to say, My intention to do blackface. I do want to tell you how unbelievably sorry I am if I ever offended you by posting this video. In response to the outcry on the internet to have her canceled, Jenna archived the old videos and announced that she would be stepping away from the channel. She said that she doesn't know if it's forever, but she wants to make sure that the things she puts out into the world aren't hurting anyone. In at number four, Shane Dawson. After what happened to George Floyd, America went into civil unrest and the people demanded answers from law enforcement. Along with that, however, comes the necessary task of curating our culture to get rid of the problematic people who only add fuel to that fire. Get rid of sounds awful, but what I mean is hold them responsible so that we can admit our mistakes and move forward as society. The weirdest part about Shane Dawson doing blackface is that he's done it on more than one occasion and done so in a time where we thought that people would be more tolerant. Even weirder is that when he apologized for taking his sketches too far with blackface, a bunch of his white fans were like, oh, we forgive you. Uh, sorry to say this, but that apology wasn't meant for you. It's meant for the people that he was mocking, and I don't think letting this one slide is a wise idea. There have been so many red flags with Shane Dawson, but this one should have been the final straw. However, it wasn't, so he continued on as if nothing happened. In at number three, Jimmy Fallon. Tonight's show host Jimmy Fallon apologized for doing an impersonation of fellow comic Chris Rock while in blackface during a 2000 episode of Saturday Night Live. Discussions of Jimmy's 20 year old skit surfaced after a video of it was posted online. According to entertainment trade media outlet Variety, it was first posted on Twitter by a user named Chef Boy O. <laughs> Chef Boy O'Dear, if you believe that's his name. Great name. And he showed Fallon as Chris Rock appearing on a talk show. When the clip began to go viral, many people called for Fallon to be fired from The Tonight Show altogether. Although instead, he just issued a lengthy apology. Fallon tweeted, in 2000, while on SNL, I made a terrible decision to do an impersonation of Chris Rock while in blackface. There is no excuse for this. I am very sorry for making this unquestionably offensive decision, and thank you all for holding me accountable. In at number two, Ellen DeGeneres. When Kevin Porter tweeted out, Right now, we all need a little kindness. You know, like Ellen DeGeneres always talks about. She's also notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Respond to this with the most insane stories you've heard about Ellen being mean, and I'll match everyone with $2 to LA Food Bank. And the response was overwhelming. However, for this point, let's just focus in on the ones about the bizarre rules for her staff, because that alone was enough to get her canceled. Benjamin Simon said, a, she has a sensitive nose so everyone must chew gum from a bowl outside of her office before talking to her and if she thinks you smell that day, you have to go home and shower. You have to go home and shower. Who does that? What a weird power move. You smell, so stop doing work for me, go home, shower, and then come back and stay late. Chelsea Babcock said, when I was working on At Midnight, our stage manager told us to never work for Ellen. He told us she has signs up in her office that say, do not look the host in the eye. I'm sorry, but that's far from normal. Don't, don't look her in the eye. What, what bizarre rules to have. How is she still tweeting, you know? Is she tweeting? I don't know. I feel like she's hiding in a cave somewhere at this point. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Kylie Jenner. Following the release of Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's very explicit new track, fans were taken by surprise with a cameo by Kylie Jenner. Many were waiting for her to start singing or something, but other people were fuming with anger for many other reasons. Beyond fears of Kylie busting out a verse on the track, many were calling her a culture vulture. Several memes were throwing shade at the appearance of Kylie and suggested that it was just another example of a white woman pulling the focus away from a black collaboration. That being said, you can't blame Cardi B for wanting to absolutely blow this song up with publicity and she did just that. Having this many stars in your video is bound to have it shared a bunch of times, especially if there is even an ounce of controversy in any one of them. So far, a petition on change.org to cancel Kylie and have her removed from the song is at 67,000 signatures. A lot of mad people, big mad. 
He mad, they mad. In at number 10, Liza Koshy. After a video of her using a mock Asian accent resurfaced, YouTuber Liza Koshy took to Instagram to apologize. Another clip included footage of Koshy pretending to speak Japanese. Her last video though is one simply titled, I am so sorry, and the video is simply a recording of her apology letter as the cursor blinks on the final words. In the letter she writes, what I once thought of as innocent jokes were actually tainted with implicit bias and what might have been intended as playful was actually to some incredibly painful. And for that, I am sorry. One of these videos in question was originally posted back in 2016 and includes Koshi putting on an Asian accent while tasting candy from Japan and Hawaii. Although she wasn't alone for this one, in that video was her fellow YouTuber and at the time boyfriend David Dobrik. In at number 9, Jake Paul. Whether or not you've ever enjoyed Jake Paul's content, he, I mean, he certainly has built an impressive fan base over the years simply by acting like a maniac. He's garnered over 20 million subscribers on YouTube, most of which truly enjoyed the content that he's posted over the years. Jake already had some people beginning to hate him when he tried to sell a gambling service called Mystery Box to his young fans. But the straw that broke the camel's back came when he decided to do some filming in Arizona. During the riots that took place in multiple areas around the city, Jake found himself on camera being handled a bottle of vodka that was stolen from a P.F. Chang's. Following that he was arrested for unlawful assembly and trespassing after multiple eyewitness accounts notified the police. Then on top of that arrest, his house was raided by the FBI in connection to the Arizona looting and they uncovered a ton of weapons. In fact, one of them was just sitting next to his hot tub. Not sure why you'd need that so close. If you're in the hot tub, they're gonna get you. In at number 8, Victoria Fuller. Victoria Fuller is probably best known for appearing as a contestant on season 24 of The Bachelor. On the side though, Victoria had dabbled with some modeling, but this gig in particular that she took was probably one of the dumbest things that she could have ever done. The campaign was called White Lives Matter and was meant to raise awareness for white marlins because they were classified as endangered species. Although when I looked into it, they weren't actually endangered. Even the merch itself was just beyond tone deaf and one of the shirts actually had a modified confederate flag on the back which just added more fuel to the fire. As a result, Cosmopolitan Magazine decided to cancel her photo shoot. Lauren Zima posted the photos and shared the story saying, Sharing this, Cosmopolitan has decided not to digitally share and publish Peter and Victoria F's winning group date photos in tonight's Bachelor episode after photos surfaced of Victoria F apparently posing in White Lives Matter clothing. Not apparently, she was. In at number 7, Sherry Pie. For RuPaul's Drag Race Season 12, they were burdened by a very strong accusation against one of their performers. Contestant Sherry Pie was axed from the show after he allegedly tried to groom and cap fish five men. He had pretended to be a casting director and asked each of the men to send in videos of them doing very degrading things. Although upon the victims doing further research into this supposed casting director, they discovered that it was all just fake. The issue with taking Joey who plays Sherry Pie off the show though was that Sherry had won most of the competitions already so he couldn't just be easily edited out. Sherry Pie has apologized and admitted that his behavior was terribly embarrassing. Regardless, he was disqualified from the show and the producers did their very best to remove most of his images giving him very minimal screen time. In number 6, JK Rowling. The author of Harry Potter will go down as having some of the most savage tweets out there. I mean, she has a strong passion for shutting down trolls. In reply to someone mocking her, well, JK Rowling said, I type a longer retort, but these diamond buttons really hurt my fingers. Although sometimes you can take things a little too far. In response again to a hater who said, glad I caught this article on Yahoo, I will now burn your books and movies too. JK Rowling replied with, well, the fumes from the DVDs might be toxic and I've still got your money, so by all means, borrow my lighter. That is an insane thing to say to someone that is just criticizing your work. And just ignore them. If anything, you're JK Rowling. You're loaded. And she also just recently made some very transphobic tweets that utterly enraged whatever Harry Potter fans that she had left. In number 5, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is no stranger to stirring up controversy with her daytime talk show appearances. In fact, it's probably the only reason why people actually tune in to watch her show. That being said, Wendy took things way too far when she decided to mock Joaquin Phoenix and the scar on his upper lip. She first told her audience that she finds him oddly attractive, but when he shaves off his mustache, he's got a hairline fracture. Then she goes on to add that it's a cleft palate right before she mocks people with cleft palates. One of those, um, what do you call it? Cleft lip. Yeah. Cleft palate. Yep. He's, he's got yep. this. Yeah. He's got this. Uh -huh. No, I find it to be, I find it to be very attractive. <laughs> Canadian football player Adam Big Hill was one of the many people that criticized Wendy for her remarks on social media. Adam tweeted, Today is Bo's big day. He is getting his lip repaired today in Winnipeg by the fantastic Dr. Ross. Thanks to everyone who has reached out and in advance, thanks for any of your well wishes for Bo. He is so loved. In response to the backlash, Wendy tweeted in response to Adam's post saying, At Big Hill 44, we're thinking about Bo today as he is in surgery. I want to apologize to the Clef community and in Bo's honor. Our show is donating to Operation Smile and Aimer Clef Palette and encourage our Wendy watchers to learn more and help support the club community. You could have done that before people got mad at you. I really hate when these celebrities do that. They, they make a mistake in something and they're like, okay, I'll just throw money at it and that'll solve the issue. No, it doesn't. You cancel.
In at number 4, Abby Lee Miller. Abby Lee Miller is another celebrity that is no stranger to creating controversies and she did so many times in the reality TV hit show called Dance Moms. Throughout her time on the show, she has made numerous headlines for repeatedly screaming at her young students in her studio and has been called out for styling children in costumes that are barely in existence. She was once even sued by a 13 year old dancer over allegations of emotional abuse. However, after Adriana Smith, mother of season 8 star Cameron Smith, alleged that Abby had made racist remarks towards them, she promptly pulled her daughter off the series. Miller denied the claims but then issued an apology saying, I genuinely understand and deeply regret how my words have affected and hurt those around me in the past, particularly those in the black community. To Cameron, Adriana and anyone else I've hurt, I am truly sorry. Regardless, the Lifetime Network decided to sever ties with Miller as a result of these allegations made against her. In at number 3, Jessica Mulrooney. CTV announced that they would be removing Jessica's reality show called I Do Redo because her recent conduct conflicted with the broadcaster's commitment to diversity and equality. Influencer Sasha Exeter accused Mulrooney Rooney of trying to threaten her livelihood. Recently, Sasha made a post about the importance of speaking out against racism, and it was oddly met with criticism from Jessica. Exeter said that she was not calling Jessica racist, but said that she is very well aware of her wealth and power along with the privilege that she is afforded due to her skin color. Apparently, Jessica took offense to Sasha simply asking her audience to support speaking out against racism. All of those comments have since been deleted, but what will stay up forever is this letter from CTV that said, because recent conduct by one of our show hosts, Jessica Mulrooney, conflicts with our commitment to diversity and inequality, CTV has removed I Do Redo from all Bell Media channels and platforms effective immediately. In at number 2, Chase Stokes. Netflix star Chase Stokes, who played John B in the series called Outer Banks, just recently had to go back through his Twitter and Facebook timeline to delete some older and sensitive tweets. In one of those tweets, Chase said, Why do fat people on planes insist on tightening their seatbelt as tight as it can possibly go? If we crash, that's definitely not saving you. He then made several other tweets using the R word to describe bad drivers in Orange County. Now, Chase took a bizarre hill to die on when he tried to explain these tweets. He apologized for them, but then claimed that his account was hacked back then, and that's why these offensive tweets were still up. If someone hacked your account, tweeted a bunch of weird stuff, you would go and delete that immediately, right? Chase tried to explain himself by tweeting, in regards to me being hacked because that seems to be a subject, I was hacked. I never said hackers deleted my messages, I understood that my past and what I said was hurtful, so I deleted my tweets to start fresh and not let things I said in the past continue to hurt people. So which is it? <laughs> Did you say the offensive stuff and then go make a fresh I'm so confused. So many questions, Chase. Last but certainly not least at our number one spot, Sheena Shea. If you're a fan of Vanderpump Rules, I implore you to start calling celebrity Sheena Stay at Home. In a series of now deleted tweets, the star said, Any of my friends working from home this week should come join me for a Palm Springs quarantine. Hey. Which wasn't a joke because she went on to say, I will continue to live my life in Palm Springs or MRD with my friends and not live it in complete isolation or fear. Simple as that. Call me ignorant, but I'm not going to stop living. She got smack you guys with people just ripping into her for being so dumb. This is not the time to be going on vacation with your friends. Listen to the World Health Organization when they tell you the importance of staying home. She soon apologized saying, for those who expressed concern or viewed my remarks as insensitive, I had just returned from a work trip and wasn't fully updated on the pandemic. I now understand the severity of our current predicament. Please stay safe and wash your damn hands. I guarantee you that that apology would not have come if she wasn't trying to salvage her reputation, whatever reputation she has. Starting off our list at number 10 is Jude Law. His affair was one of the biggest ones in Hollywood history because of how heavily documented it was. Honestly, it was all the media was talking about at one point in time. He got engaged to Sienna Miller back in 2004 and they honestly seemed like a match made in heaven. But it wasn't long before a cheating scandal surfaced in 2006 and revealed that Jude had been cheating with their nanny. It was the nanny, Daisy Wright, who came out and shared the details of their little entanglement. Jude did not deny it to the press. He actually came clean about the affair and released a public apology to Sienna, saying that he is ashamed and deeply regrets it. Sienna broke off the relationship immediately, but then they tried to rekindle it. It wasn't actually until 2011 that they officially called it quits. Bless her heart for trying to still make it right after that. In spot number nine, we have Ben Affleck. Now, this one is still up for debate and it always has been, so it will just depend on whose side of the story you actually believe. I will leave that up to you. The actor was once married to Jennifer Garner and rumors started spreading rapidly that he had cheated on her with their nanny, Christine. Sources claim that they spotted him with the nanny after his split with Jennifer and that it was revealed that they had been having inappropriate meetings while they were actually together. At the time, Ben refused to comment on the claims, but his rep did. His rep called the allegations complete garbage. As for the nanny, she was legally not allowed to speak on her relationship with Ben and Jennifer, but 
neither of them continued to use her as a nanny even after they went their separate ways. Cruising into number eight is Gavin Rossdale. It was an unhappy ending for his marriage with Gwen Stefani. The two of them were married for 13 years before it ended because of adultery. Turns out Gavin was cheating on Gwen right under her nose for three years with the family's long-term nanny, Mindy Mann. She was their nanny for a very long time and took care of their three sons. Gwen actually uncovered the affair was happening through explicit texts between the two of them, including nude photos of Mindy and plans to meet up for a hookup. She didn't actually find the messages by snooping through his phone. Another nanny discovered them through the family iPad, which was linked to Gavin's phone, and then she told Gwen. Mindy was immediately fired, obviously, and even though Gavin initially said it was all just flirting and that an affair never actually happened, it wasn't until months later that he fully admitted it, and Gwen ended the marriage. Rightfully so. Number seven, Kristen Stewart. The Twilight movies were some of the biggest successes of our time, and at the center of all the media frenzies surrounding the film was Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart, the two co-stars who began a relationship during filming. Fans were absolutely obsessed with the then it couple, but everything really changed when paparazzi pictures were leaked in 2012 of Stewart and Rupert Sanders making out. He was the director of Snow White and the Huntsman, which she also starred in. The shocking photos of Christian kissing another man circulated everywhere, and fans were rightfully heartbroken. I mean, literally everyone had an opinion, including Donald Trump for some reason. Sanders tried to do some serious damage control by calling the kiss a momentary lapse. Christian also had to publicly apologize to Robert, but it didn't really help because the two broke up soon after. And the two reconciled for a time, but eventually broke up again. Safe to say that their relationship never really recovered. But several years later, in an interview, the actress insisted that it wasn't an actual affair, but because of the intense media scrutiny at the time, she didn't see the point in denying it. Coming up next at number six is Stephen Belafonte. This one is a lot to unravel. I was actually reading through all the articles on this and my God, it was the messiest divorce like in history. No joke. Stephen and his ex-wife Mel B, the former Spice Girl, hired a nanny named Lorraine Gills who was in her 20s throughout their working relationship. But Mel B started to claim that Stephen was having an affair with Lorraine and that is when things just got very messy. Stephen and Lorraine Lorraine then came forward and said that the three of them were in a sexual relationship together and that no affair was ever going on. But then Mel went as far as claiming that her husband actually got Lorraine pregnant during the affair and then paid her $240,000 to have an abortion. They were all in this massive legal battle for years and Lorraine actually sued Mel B for defamation based on these claims. Mel ended up having to pay her $1.8 million and Stephen and Lorraine still remain friends to this day. That is a messy situation. Halfway through our list number five is Alex Rodriguez and Madonna. Alex was with his ex-wife Cynthia Skirtis at the time that this scandal blew up in his face. There were multiple rumors going around at the time of infidelity on his end and one of them was allegedly with Madonna. Why this affair was so shocking was because Madonna was also married at the time and she was denying the claims. It was actually Alex's former trainer at the time, Dodd Romero, who talked about the affair. He claimed that Alex got got pulled in by the dark side of Madonna's religion at the time and was totally brainwashed. A friend of Cynthia's also spoke out and said that she told her she found a letter from Alex to Madonna and in it he told her that she was his true soulmate. In interviews though, Alex always said that he and Madonna were just friends and that is what they have always claimed. So we really don't know. I don't buy it. Rolling into spot number four, we have The Dream. 2010 was a crazy year for him and his wife, Christina Milan. He filed for divorce in February, which came as a total shock to Christina, as she was just nine days away from giving birth to their daughter. What a gentleman. She asked the court to throw out the divorce papers though, claiming that he was lying about the status of their relationship and also said that he had cheated on her. Turns out she wasn't wrong about the whole cheating claims. Photos leaked and showed The Dream cheating on her with his own personal assistant. Assistant, Melissa Marie. Images showed them frolicking and just getting real touchy with each other in the Caribbean. When Christina was asked about the cheating scandal, she said, I didn't know anything, but looking back, my gut was telling me something was off, but I thought I could fix it. Good news is, is she went on to be a great mother and said motherhood has made her feel sexier than she ever has before. 
you go girl. And at number 3, Brandy Glanville. This one's a bit of a mess with a lot of cheating involved. At one point in time, Brandy Glanville and Eddie Sabran were married, and Leanne Rimes was married to Sean Sherman. But then Leanne and Eddie started cheating together, and it turned into a huge mess. The affair was a main storyline on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, along with Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules star Sheena Shea was also involved in this drama because she was also cheating with Eddie while Eddie was with both Leanne Rimes and Brandi Glanville. Eddie must have been very busy during this time. But there's somewhat of a happy ending. Leanne Rimes and Eddie Sabran got married and are still together to this day. Rolling into the number two spot, we have John Gosselin. You would probably know him better as John from John and Kate Plus Eight, the family with eight children who got their own reality show and won the hearts of millions of people. It was a fun show, it was kind of weird. But their family life got complicated back in 2009 when a babysitter named Stephanie Santoro opened up to the tabloids about her alleged affair with John. We aren't talking about him cheating on Kate though. This was at the time that he was with his girlfriend, Haley Glassman. He swore that he never cheated and that he was always very faithful to Haley, but Stephanie begged to differ. She claimed they cheated on multiple occasions and that it all started when he invited her to his place to hang out in the hot tub one night. Haley and John eventually broke up and his mom even admitted to the press that he did not see Haley as the person he wanted to spend the rest of his life with. So that kind of added to the cheating rumors. Winning our number one spot is Bill Clinton. I mean, there's really no way that this one would cause a ton of controversy. Former President Bill Clinton was caught in a massive sex scandal that led to his impeachment in 1998. He had an affair on his wife Hillary Clinton with a White House intern. He spoke about it all these years later in 2020 when he did an interview for Hillary, the documentary series. He actually took full responsibility in the documentary and said, nobody sits down and thinks, I think I'll take a really irresponsible risk. It's bad for my family, bad for my country, bad for the people who work with me. He also went on to explain that the affair was something he used to manage his anxieties, which obviously had people on Twitter just losing their minds. As for Hillary, she did remain by his side through the affair, and even though they are still together to this day, she said it was a very devastating time for her. Number 10, Nick Young. In March, a secretly taped video from Lakers player D'Angelo Russell hit the internet, which showed Nick Young admitting to cheating on then fiance Iggy Azalea. He claimed that it was false and she believed him, even going on the Ellen DeGeneres show shortly afterwards to assure everyone that things were good between them. But their relationship soon crumbled when Iggy caught Nick on a security camera bringing back girls into their home. He didn't even have the decency to go someplace else, although that would have been just as bad. She announced the split on Instagram. Quote, Unfortunately, although I love Nick and have tried and tried to rebuild my trust in him, it's become apparent in the last few weeks I am unable to. Nick, on the other hand, just simply tweeted the word single. To add insult to injury, it later came out that he was also expecting a baby with his ex-girlfriend Kiana Green, and the baby was definitely conceived while the former couple were still together. Number 9. Jesse James Sandra Bullock and Jesse James married in 2005, and throughout the first few years, years of their marriage, they looked happier than ever as they attended red carpet events together. The host of Monster Garage supported his successful wife as she won countless awards thanks to her incredible talents as an actress. But it was soon uncovered that Jesse had been cheating on Sandra Bullock for a long time with multiple women, which led him to become, by his own admission, the most hated man in the world. He eventually checked into rehab for sex addiction, and Sandra swiftly filed for divorce in 2010. But the kicker is that he never showed any real remorse for cheating on her with countless women. In an interview seven years later, he said that he had no regrets about the affair, and went on to say, quote, yeah, I did cheat on my wife. Yeah, I stood up and took accountability for it and apologized, and that's the end of the story. In general, both women and men cheat, it's a part of life. What an absolute Prince Charming. Number 8. Scott Distick This decade-long romance was very well documented on Keeping Up With The Kardashians, and although fans loved Scott's quick-witted, snarky humor, it was obvious that he had trouble remaining committed to Courtney. The pair eventually called things off for good after Scott went on a party binge just weeks after the birth of their third child together, and photos of him getting close with other women surfaced online. Pictures emerged of Scott and his ex-girlfriend Chloe Bartoli 
getting pretty cozy while on vacation. The two broke up after this incident but continued to have a rocky relationship. First her sister Kim caught a girl hiding in Scott's bathroom in Dubai and finally the eldest Kardashian invited Scott on a family vacation to Costa Rica. He ended up sneaking a girl into his hotel room and while he was trying to reunite with his ex. The final incident is what prompted Kardashian to tell Scott that they were never ever getting back together. Up next number 7 we have Arnold Schwarzenegger. Another nanny cheating scandal affair that flooded media outlets and was very heavily documented because the story was so shocking. It's still shocking. The world was in complete shock when finding out that he had a secret son no one knew about for 20 years. He was married to Maria Shriver at the time of the affair and had four children together. He had an affair in 1996 with their nanny Mildred. Baina. It allegedly happened while the family was on vacation and then he stayed behind to shoot a movie. Once Mildred got pregnant and had her son, Arnold thought it belonged to her husband until he got older and realized that the son started to look a lot like he did. Once he confirmed that he was the father, he began to financially support him and once Maria found out, she ended the marriage. Arnold says that he has spent a lot of time with his son Joseph over the years and that they have been getting closer, even working out together. Number six. Jada Pinkett Smith. Although the Smiths themselves wouldn't call it cheating, the rest of the world was shocked when Aslina spoke about a relationship he had with Pinkett Smith during an interview in 2020. Quote, I totally gave myself to that relationship for years of my life. I truly and really, really fell deeply in love and have a ton of love for her. He also revealed that Will Smith knew about it the whole time and had even given them his blessing. Though Jada initially denied the claims, she eventually confessed to being in an entanglement with August when she and her husband were separated. We decided we were going to separate for a period of time and you go figure out how to make yourself happy and I'll figure out how to make myself happy. They both went on the red table talk together and in a heartbreaking episode, Jada told Will how she came to be romantically involved with August and how he made her feel special because of what was lacking in their relationship at the time. Will took the whole thing like a champ but the clip went viral online because he looked like he was on the verge of tears the whole time Jada was talking. It was just an all round shocking moment. Halfway number 5 Sandra Bullock The marriage between Jesse James and Sandra Bullock went down in flames due to infidelity caused by Jesse's insecurity over their relationship. The couple first started dating in 2003 and got married in 2005. But after only 5 years of marriage they split in 2010 and it was exposed that Jesse had been cheating with multiple women. After the split Jesse said the hardest thing was not being able to be with their adopted child Lewis, who Bullock adopted without James. Following the cheating Bullock filed for divorce and Jesse James became the most hated man in America. At one point he even tried to downplay the cheating to the public which got him even more hate. Number 4 Ryan Philippe the actor first met Reese Witherspoon while starring alongside her in the 1999 movie Cruel Intentions. They actually fell so in love with each other that they ended up getting married that same year. But all good things must come to an end, especially Hollywood romances. In 2008, Ryan started to get closer to his co-star, Australian actress Abby Cornish, while they were filming Stop Loss. The two of them seemed to be so comfortable being seen in public together that they were eventually caught having dinner together in a Texas restaurant, despite the fact that there were some curtains around the table. They were also caught together again just outside of Ryan's apartment. The affair was so in your face it just wasn't funny. But it wasn't until Reese Witherspoon discovered intimate text messages back and forth that were being exchanged between the two of them on his phone. Then it was clear that after 7 years of marriage and 2 children, Reese was ready to call it quits with Ryan, and later went on to marry talent agent Jim Toth, whilst Ryan and Abby's love affair eventually lost its spark. Rolling into spot number 3 is Kristen Stewart and Rupert Sanders. This is by far one of the worst scandals to ever get caught on camera. I remember the pictures being everywhere at the time. It was back in 2011 when Kristen was dating her Twilight co-star Robert Pattinson and everyone thought they were going to be together forever. Or at least we hoped. I hoped. But then out of nowhere pictures of her making out with another man were all over the internet and the cover of magazines. The man was Rupert Sanders who was the director of her movie Snow White and the Huntsman which is where the two of them met. Rupert was also married at the time to the mother of his children Liberty Ross so things were very messy. People were also shocked because he was 41 at the time and Kristen was only 22 so the age gap just surprised a lot of people. Robert and Kristen split immediately but Rupert and his wife continued to try and work it out. Number 2 Kevin Hart 
This comedian and actor unfortunately has a long history of messing around behind his partner's backs and not really caring enough to hide the fact that he was doing so. I mean, the comedian even incorporated the story of cheating on his first wife into his 2013 special, Let Me Explain. Even though he tried to make it seem as though the experience made him change and grow as a person, it wasn't long before the same scandal arose yet again. Four years after the special aired, he publicly admitted to cheating on his second wife, Enneko Parrish, while she was pregnant with his son. Now he is somehow using this new story in his new Netflix docuseries, Kevin Hart, Don't F It Up, where he has his wife talk about how she found him cheating. Quote, how I found out was a DM. I don't know who it was. They sent me an edited video of Kevin and you know, another woman. But she went on to say that she does believe in second chances and that she's all about forgiveness and adding that three strikes and you're out, which everyone can agree is way more than fair. Number one, Tristan Thompson. Buckle up because this one is pretty crazy. In 2018, photos of Tristan having an affair surfaced online while he was dating Khloe Kardashian. And get this, she was nine months pregnant. Then if you thought that was bad, not long after, TMZ came out with a video footage dating back to October 2017 that showed the NBA player kissing two other random women at the club. But despite the fact that there was now hard evidence of Tristan cheating on Chloe without really attempting to hide it, they decided to stay together for the birth of their child. But things did not stay smooth forever as in 2019, reports surfaced that Tristan had cheated on Chloe once again, this time with none other than Jordan Woods who was a close friend of the family, Kylie Jenner's best friend and roommate. Anonymous party attendees told TMZ that the pair were all over each other and made out several times throughout the night. The explosive incident almost broke up the family entirely, and since then, Jordan and Kylie severed all ties to each other, and Chloe and Tristan called it quits for good. At number 10, Janet Jackson. The Super Bowl halftime show is one of the biggest televised events of each year in North America. Millions upon millions of people tune in annually to watch the year's biggest and probably most expensive performance, so for the people putting on the show, there's a lot on the line, and the stakes are quite high for whoever is on stage that year. Normally, these performances go pretty well, though there are always memes of those off moments like Left Shark, for example. But during the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, viewers watched a serious wardrobe malfunction happen that was life-changing and career-altering to say the least, and it was more serious than just a meme. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were performing together on stage that night when a move went wrong and Janet's breast ended up getting exposed. Following the televised incident that the media dubbed Nipplegate, the FCC sued CBS for the live mishap in a $550,000 lawsuit, citing indecent exposure as their cause. Janet Jackson was also put through the ringer for her part in the whole scandal, even though none of it was really her fault. It was just an accident that obviously wasn't meant to happen. It was discovered that the whole incident happened because the two performers had added a costume reveal into their performance at the last minute, and though it was rehearsed, the stunt failed at the last minute, resulting in Janet exposure. As a result of the backlash that Janet was receiving, she was uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year, and her songs were also blacklisted from the radio. Even the next few albums that she released following the incident were met with a lot of negativity because of this scandal. It was all just an accident that caused a huge scandal and ended in someone getting cancelled and facing so much hate for absolutely no reason. At number 9, Megan Fox. Even though Megan Fox is getting back into Hollywood after having been essentially blacklisted for the past few years, we can't forget how all of the negativity she received happened and how unnecessary it all was. After having a significant role in the Transformers films, actress Megan Fox was fired from her role and she faced a lot of backlash. When she was fired from Transformers, the film's director Michael Bay said that the decision to let her go came after she was, quote, a nightmare to work with. This comment came after Megan allegedly made a comment about how strict Michael was on set, and when fellow director Steven Spielberg caught wind of what she said, he advised Bay to fire her and that is exactly what happened. This reputation of supposedly being difficult to work with followed Megan for a while as people started to see her in a negative light, though none of that was actually true. No one wanted to hire her because of the negativity that was cast on her, and as if that pressure wasn't enough not too long ago, Megan also spoke out about how for a long time people saw her as nothing but a sexual object in Hollywood and not the skilled actress that she really is. She also continued to get hate because she advocates for feminism, and people don't like that for some reason. And she continues to get hate for speaking out against sexism in the film industry. 
She's been facing so much negativity that she really just doesn't deserve. Now before I carry on with the list, I would like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and also do consider checking out my gaming channel Viper Girl if you're interested in watching some fun gaming content. I've got new things brewing over there, so go check it out and subscribe while you're there. At number eight, Rebecca Black. Back in the day, Rebecca Black's song Friday was the biggest talking point among all middle schoolers. Everyone around that time was singing that song when it came out and getting it stuck in all of our parents' heads. Rebecca essentially became famous overnight, but there's part of her that wishes that never happened because she faced a lot of negativity. Rebecca was absolutely overrun with hate comments for months, all for creating a silly song and music video that people genuinely dubbed the worst video in the world. The fact that she was invited on Good Morning America and the news anchors really asked a then 13-year-old Rebecca whether the negative response to her music had made her think about taking her own life should really show you how bad things were at the time. I mean, those comments are so unnecessary and toxic. Rebecca has continued to make music ever since her Friday song and music video dropped, and she's kept a steady career, but she hasn't yet grown out of Friday's shadow, which means that the hate is still there and it really shouldn't be. At number seven, Lizzo. Lizzo is one of my favorite people in Hollywood because of how confident and unapologetic she is. She lives her life how she wants and I love it, but some people apparently don't love it and they send her a lot of unnecessary hate. Lizzo has faced hate because of her weight with people making comments about her appearance. Jillian Michaels famously commented on Lizzo's weight and though some saw it as constructive, others didn't, which resulted in Jillian facing backlash. On top of that, there have been a lot of people commenting on the food that Lizzo eats. She's posted about her plant-based diet and has posted a handful of recipes for her followers, and she actually faced a lot of hate for that too. There are also multiple Reddit posts that discuss why people dislike Lizzo and her music. Lizzo promotes body positivity, inclusivity, and she, again, just advocates for living your best life, and so she doesn't deserve to be hated on for wanting to live a genuine and fulfilling life for herself. So all of you haters, move along. At number six, Winona Ryder. For a long time, actress Winona Ryder faced a lot of hate after she sort of hit rock bottom in the media after her shoplifting scandal back in 2001. Winona was caught stealing a lot of merchandise from a Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills, and this scandal essentially ended her career for quite a long time, and she kind of got canceled for it. The actress was arrested after stealing $5,500 worth of merchandise and was charged with grand theft and vandalism and was found guilty of her crimes. She was forced to pay a fine of about $2,700 and had to complete 480 hours of community service. After that, she was ridiculed by the media and she also lost a lot of work because of the negative press that she was getting. Yes, she did something illegal, but she learned from her mistakes and she completed her community service and grew from the experience. Instead of berating her, people should have just shown her kindness because this was clearly a really hard time for her and she really didn't deserve the hate. At number five, Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick started a movement to raise voices and awareness, but it ended with him facing so much negativity and backlash. The former 49ers quarterback caused a huge scandal when he took a knee during the national anthem. He did this because he, quote, refused to support a country that he believes oppresses black people and other minorities, end quote. His actions ended up causing a massive stir in the sporting community, mostly in the NFL, and as a result of Colin refusing to stand for the anthem, every NFL franchise colluded to keep him out of the league. He was essentially canceled for believing in something that is a real world issue and needs to be addressed, but instead of inciting change, Colin ended up getting blacklisted from the NFL. The only thing that he received in return for his actions was a settlement from the league and a prompt social cancellation. During an interview with the NFL media, Colin defended his actions saying, quote, I'm not going to stand to show my pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. To me, this is bigger than football and it would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the street and people getting paid leave and getting away with hurting others. This is not something that I'm going to run by anybody. I'm not looking for approval. I have to stand up for people that are oppressed." End quote. He didn't deserve to be shown so much hate and be silenced for making a statement about a real world issue. At number four, Jamie Lynn Spears. Jamie Lynn Spears faced a lot of hate during the time that was already difficult enough as it is. Back in 2008, the former Nickelodeon actress was dealing with the news of her pregnancy being exposed, but she was also dealing with being cancelled in the media and by fans. At the time of her pregnancy, news came out about the beloved Nickelodeon show Zoe 101 being cancelled. Now, there was no direct explanation as to why the show was cancelled, but because this news and the news about Jamie's pregnancy came around at the same time, fans put two and two together and hopped on the negativity express. 
As a result, fans berated the actress for years, and they even mocked her kid as the reason why the show ended. She didn't deserve the hate back then, and it's only now starting to subside since the reason for the show's end was finally clarified in an interview Jamie did with Nylon Magazine last year. Jamie revealed that the show had actually finished filming months before she even got pregnant, saying, quote, I didn't become pregnant until probably six months after we wrap or something like that, but because some of the episodes had not aired yet. The show had already wrapped and there was never a negotiation to go into any more seasons. We were too old. It was done, end quote. Fans just jumped to conclusions and sent her so much hate that was so unwarranted. At number 3, Johnny Depp Now I doubt this needs any more explanation because we all know what's happened with Johnny Depp and we are all aware that he does not deserve the hate that he's been receiving over the past few years. For a long time, people hated this guy because of all the allegations against him for allegedly hurting his ex-wife, but now we know the truth about what was really going on during his relationship with Amber Heard and we know that he did not warrant any of the hate that he was given. He had been blacklisted from Hollywood for years, his fans left him, and he was essentially shunned from the world because he was made to look like a villain. He had lost respect from a lot of people until recently after the truth was finally revealed showing that he was just a victim and no one believed him. It's honestly heartbreaking to know that he went through all of this pain and hate with no one taking his side, and knowing this, it really solidifies the fact that he did not deserve the hate that he received. At number 2, Meghan Markle now, I know that I'm going to get absolutely roasted for this, but Meghan Markle is my idol. She's a strong biracial woman who has overcome so much and who stands up for what she believes in. I think that she carries a lot of good traits and a lot of people can look up to that, but there are still some people out there who really despise her. I think that these people are probably a little intimidated or a little ignorant, but hey, what do I know? Over the past few years, Meghan has faced so much negativity in the media. From marrying Prince Harry and joining the royal family, to the way she was compared to her sister-in-law Kate Middleton, to her and Harry's decision to leave the royal family, and most notably her vocalization of her struggles with her mental health. She is just a woman who is trying to live her life authentically and who is not afraid to speak up and advocate for others who might not have the ability to do that themselves. I honestly feel like she's taking the brunt of all of this hate that she gets for merely just existing in order to shield other women from the same kind of hate because she just seems like the type of person who would go out of her way to put herself in the spotlight to protect everyone else. I appreciate Megan even if no one else does and she certainly does not deserve the hate that she gets. And finally, at number one, Britney Spears. Britney Spears is the number one person on this list who not only didn't deserve the hate that she received, but also deserves an apology from everyone. Between 2007 and 2008, Britney Spears was essentially cancelled because she was going through a really hard time in her life and no one took her mental health or well-being seriously. She was labeled as crazy and was put under conservatorship so that her life was basically controlled for the last several years. Recently, we've heard from Britney herself how hard things have been under her conservatorship, and between that and the Framing Britney documentary, the world got to really see what life was like for her and how the media destroyed her life and public image. Everything about her, from her body to her voice and even her parenting, was scrutinized and made fun of, and she didn't deserve that at all. Knowing all that she's been through and how it has affected her life so much, I think it is a no-brainer to say that she really, truly did not deserve all of that negativity. So many people have switched gears from hating on the singer to wanting to free her from her conservatorship, so maybe things are going to be a little more positive going forward because no one deserves that kind of hate that she was receiving. Starting us off at number 10 is Ashton Kutcher. A lot of people have trashed his name online, calling him obnoxious, and also didn't like his performance on Two and a Half Men when he replaced Charlie Sheen's character. A lot of people will say that they cannot stand him. There was a time when his wife, Mila Kunis, agreed with these people and said that she could not stand his attitude. She talked about it with glamour and said, at the height of his career, I was like, ugh, I don't like you. I don't even know you anymore. You think you're hot. But she admits he has changed in a lot of ways and people don't give him credit for it. He actually runs a non-profit company dedicated to fighting child sexual slavery through technology and is a great father to his kids. In my opinion, it seems like he's matured, so maybe people can like ease up a little bit. Just a thought. In spot number 9 is Gwyneth Paltrow. Honestly, I've always been a little bit confused as to why she gets so much hate. People started hating on her when she was promoting women to steam their private parts and then making candles that apparently smell like hers. A little weird, 
fully don't understand what happened there. In 2013, a magazine actually titled her the most hated celebrity. She talked about that during the interview and said she was completely surprised by it. She told BBC, first of all, I was like, I'm the most hated celebrity more than like Chris Brown. What did I do? And honestly, guys, um, she makes a good point. How she is receiving more hate than someone who like openly admitted to beating up his girlfriend, I don't get and I don't agree with. I'm just saying it doesn't really quite add up. Like maybe she's not everyone's cup of tea, but she didn't do anything horribly wrong or like intentionally bad, you know? Swiping the number eight spot is Angelina Jolie. People started hating on her when reports made claims back in the day that she was hooking up with Brad Pitt while he was still married to Jennifer Aniston. She actually received more hate than he did, even though he was the married one. I don't get it. But that was when she was in her early 20s, so it's weird that people still rip on her for that. There's also a few more reasons that she receives hate. Some people just say they can't stand her or they don't like her as an actress. But she does a lot of good with her platform. She does a lot of charity work with the United Nations and they stated that she is very involved compared to the other celebrity PR tours. A UN external relations officer said, most celebrities stop at 110 and hold a baby. That's precisely not what these trips are with Angelina. It's just refugees and her in this intimate space. There is no place for anything Hollywood or celebrity. I think we don't give her enough credit for that because she does do a lot of those trips guys. Like I'm not even kidding. I looked into it. Pretty impressive. Sliding into number seven is Kristen Stewart. The amount of memes and TikToks made about her is enough to prove that she's one of the most hated people on this list. People are constantly making fun of her acting skills, saying that she only has one facial expression. This opinion could be enough to hate her, but people are also because she was caught cheating on her ex-boyfriend Robert Pattinson with one of her former film directors who was married with kids at the time. Now, I do think she deserved that reaction, like for that whole scandal. That was wrong. But even before that, people were hating on her, making fun of her in a bunch of ways all over the internet. She has apologized for her mistake and has opened up about her sexuality as a bisexual woman. She has tried to make a difference in the LGBTQ community and promotes acceptance and love despite being hated by 80% of movie lovers. She is trying. Cruising to number six is Jaden Smith. The 22 year old receives a lot of hate and sometimes I think people forget that he's only 22 and still has a lot of like growing to do, you know, like maturity wise. He is Will Smith's son but still gets ridiculed online for being annoying, weird, and pretentious. Those are other people's words, not mine. He has done some questionable things though, like the time he showed up to Kim Kardashian's wedding dressed as Batman because he thought and said that he needed to protect everyone there. People always criticize his wardrobe and style and maybe you don't agree with his choices, but some people do find it to be refreshing. He boldly tries to redefine masculinity stereotypes by showing up on the red carpet in a dress. Plus, he started an eco-friendly water bottle company and donated water to residents in Flint, Michigan. So I do think He's trying. He's also young and he's trying to figure out, you know, who he is. I was do I was up to no good at 22. We are halfway through and we have Amy Schumer. People fell in love with her the first time we got really introduced to her on the Ellen DeGeneres show. She quickly rose to fame as a comedian and actress, but as her career continued, it seemed like more and more people just started turning against her. She is one of the highest paid female comedians, but people started attacking her for her comedy routine, saying that she is not funny and that she is too raunchy and inappropriate. I think comedy is different for everyone and like depending on your sense of humor, Humor, one thing is funny to someone and it's not funny to someone else. But one thing I don't think she gets enough credit for is how she is normalizing her body. She often shares that her body doesn't meet the typical Hollywood standards and encourages women to love who they are and be proud of their imperfections, like cellulite, stretch marks, the changes of pregnancy, everything. Honestly, I think that would be so hard to do with the pressures of beauty as a celebrity, especially. Like, I give her props for that. Moving on to number four is Taylor Swift. For as long as I have known about Taylor Swift, I have known that 90% of people I know don't like her. And I don't really get why. 
A mom loves her, but I have a lot of people in my life who don't like her music and find her songs really irritating because a lot of them are about breakups. I actually like Taylor Swift and I think she's super talented, but she is one of those pop stars who face a lot of judgment and heat for every move she makes. From the outside looking in, it feels like she can honestly just never do anything right. Someone will always have something to say and it is always negative. But she does a lot of good for people. She has done numerous visits to children's hospitals, tons of donations to charities, donating to GoFundMe campaigns to pay for fans hospital bills. It's easy to look at someone for things that they don't do rather than the things that they do do. In the third spot is Anne Hathaway. She too was dubbed the most hated celebrity at one point in 2013, but does anyone actually know what she did for people to hate her? Everything I found online seems a little bit petty, like oh she tries too hard, or her Oscars acceptance speech was so annoying. Like I can understand if people don't like her in some of her movies because like we all have our own opinions on what makes a good performance, but overall I don't really get why she's disliked so much. For the most part in Hollywood, she really keeps to herself and her personal life is more private than a lot of other celebrities in Hollywood. So I don't fully get this one. Someone explain why people hate Anne Hathaway. Coming into number two is Lady Gaga. She is a talented singer who has a very successful music career as well as an acting career after she took home an Oscar for her movie, A Star Is Born. But despite having millions of fans and success, there are a lot of people who dislike her and they show it online. Large groups of haters try to tear her down for her body, her music, her voice, and her acting skills, despite the Oscar award. Apparently she's always dealt with hate even in her personal life. It was revealed that her university friends created a Facebook group when she was just starting out and they called it Stephanie Germanata, you'll never be famous. They ripped on her daily in that group as she tried to pursue her music career. Jokes on them, just saying. But Gaga has a very big heart and she shows that with how she treats her fans, how she helps the LGBTQ community, how she promotes self love and acceptance, and all of her charity work with the homeless youth. Honestly guys, her charitable work list could go on and on. I was looking into it. There are a lot of things to name. She does a lot of good work for people. In our number one spot is Justin Bieber. I feel like I'm going to land myself on a hate list after this because a lot of people hate him and having him on on this list might not please people. I think we can all be on the same page that we haven't always agreed with some of his behavior. And some people would say they don't like his music and they don't think he deserves the fame that he has. But in recent years, his attitude seems to have changed drastically and he moved out of Hollywood to start fresh. He moved to Ontario, Canada with his wife Haley to get away from that LA lifestyle. He has gotten more involved in his faith and has been open about his struggles with anxiety and depression. He now spends a lot of his time trying to help others who go through the same thing. And honestly, I think that these changes are worth noting, even if they seem small, he's trying. I genuinely think he's trying to be a better person. Starting off this countdown is Kevin Hart. He's an adored comedian and actor, but that hasn't always been the case. There was a time in his career when people were against him, but the hate was kind of justified. Kevin had sent out some homophobic tweets that only he thought was funny. The tweet that caused the most controversy was, I quote, why does Damien DW's profile pic look like a gay billboard for AIDS? But since then he has taken full responsibility and has owned up to his mistake with genuine apologies to back it up. He has fully supported the LGBTQ community and people have given him a second chance. He's a funny guy, guys. I really like him, don't agree with his tweets, but you know, we all make mistakes. Up next, number nine is Nicole Richie. People hated her for a very long time because of her reputation on her reality show, The Simple Life. The show followed her and her best friend, Paris Hilton, as they tried to live normal lives on farms without any of their own money or cell phones. Some people thought it was funny and entertaining, but for the most part, people just hated seeing the spoiled girls getting their own ridiculous show like this one. But over time, Nicole got involved in the fashion industry and started a very successful career outside of reality TV. She is now married with two kids, has a successful fashion line, starred on the NBC sitcom Great News, and is a judge on Making the Cut. Making his way into number eight is Zac Efron. This one isn't on my personal list because I never hated him. 
He honestly, like he was truly one of my first loves. But there's a large majority of people who couldn't stand him during his high school musical days. And they really didn't like him after he left and started playing the boy next door in most of his movies. But as he got older, people warmed up to him as he stayed out of the Hollywood drama and kept to himself for the most part. One fan shared a picture online and said they grew love for him after he bought one of his fans a new phone because his had shattered while trying to take a video of him. How nice is that? Like you didn't have to do that. It's just because a fan's trying to get a picture and they drop it and it shatters. Most people would have kept walking. In spot number seven is Kesha. People used to ridicule her for her style, music, and questioned her talent. She obviously had fans that helped her career be successful, but people argued her talents and if she deserved the opportunities and fame that she had in comparison to other artists. But she started to get a ton of praise and celebration when she released her album Rainbow, which came out after a five year hiatus. The album was a result of a years long legal battle with Dr. Luke, her former producer, over and physical and emotional abuse allegations. She was stuck in a five year record contract and could not release music until she was outside of the label. So when she left the label and released her powerful song Praying, people started to respect her more. Sliding into number six is Neil Patrick Harris. He broke out as a child star, but his career stumbled for a while until he booked a quick cameo in Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. This seemed to get him more noticed, and he later landed the role as Barney Stinson in How I Met Your Mother. His character on the show had a lot of people, mostly women, lose respect for him. They didn't like how his character treated women in the show, and they couldn't really separate the fact that it was just his character. But people got to know the real him, and he came out as a homosexual homosexual and was the first openly gay man to host the Academy Awards. He has also been named on the most 100 influential people list by Time Magazine. Halfway through at number 5 is Winona Ryder. Her career was in full swing during the late 80s and 90s, starring in classics such as Beetlejuice, Heathers and Edward Scissorhands. But in 2001 she was arrested on charges of shoplifting and possession of illegal prescription drugs. People lost respect for her after seeing shoplifting footage and her career stalled for a while. But she did admit to her wrongs and turn her life around for the better, landing a role in 2016 on the TV series Stranger Things. She spoke about her time away from acting and said, A lot of actors have ups and downs. I think mine were. People might see them as awful, but I learned and I appreciated the time away. Since then, people continue to praise her acting skills on Stranger Things. She kills it. Swiping the number 4 slot is Justin Bieber. When he first got introduced to the music industry, he was just a kid with flippy skater hair. It was kind of hard to hate him. He was a kid. But as he grew older, people started to have more of an opinion about him and his choices. Like the time he showed up to meet Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper in a pair of overalls. Or the time that he spit on his fans. Or the time that he tried to fight the paparazzi. Justin ended up taking a break away from Hollywood, but recently came back as a brand new person, so he says. He recently opened up about his mental health struggles, and people have seen and appreciated a new side to him. He spends his time on social media using it as a positive platform to help spread awareness, and also shares his journey with God. In the third spot is Robert Downey Jr. His career took off in the 80s, but his snag after after he had multiple run ins with the law and spent some time in rehab. I don't know if people hated him, but they didn't really agree with his lifestyle and behavior at the time. In 1996, he was caught with an unloaded gun in his car. A few months later, he was cited for trespassing. Overall, he was arrested multiple times, spent time in prison, and was kicked off of his show, Ali McBeal. But then, in 2003, his career started to pick up and he made this massive comeback. He has been loved for many years after dominating the box office as Iron Man back in 2008. He is the man now. The Iron Man. Taking over second place is Martha Stewart. She is the motherhood of food after having a successful catering company, a series of best selling books, and her own talk show. She's always been a businesswoman worth millions, but she went from businesswoman to prison mate when found guilty of insider trading. She was also charged with obstruction of injustice and conspiracy and served five months in prison. 
People were not happy with her actions. But after she got out of prison, she turned a new leaf and was able to make her company profitable again. She even has a show with Snoop Dogg. It's called Martha and Snoop's Potluck Dinner Party. So you can't hate her now. Like she's chilling with Snoop Dogg on a show. It's hard to hate her now. In our number one spot is Johnny Depp. You've probably seen or heard the wild lawsuit case that he's going through right now against his ex-wife Amber Heard. The successful actor lost everything and was one of the most hated actors in Hollywood after Amber came forward claiming that he and left her with bruises all over her face. But over time, the truth came out and evidence proved that she was lying and she was abusing him. Audio footage leaks that heard her say she was going to purposely lie about it because the world would never believe his side and that she wanted to take down his career basically. So now people are coming to his defense and feel bad for ever hating him. At number 10, Jamie Lynn Spears. Back in 2008-ish, Jamie Lynn Spears was going through quite a lot. At the time, she was dealing with the news of her pregnancy being exposed, but she was also dealing with being cancelled. At the time of her pregnancy, news came out about the beloved Nickelodeon show Zoe 101 being cancelled. Now the public seemed to have put the pieces together and made the assumption that the show was being cancelled because of Jamie's pregnancy, and then they just ran with it. As a result, fans berated the actress and for years they mocked her kid as the reason why the show ended. She didn't deserve that kind of treatment then, and since things about the end of Zoe 101 have been cleared up, people are now realizing that they jumped to conclusions way too early. In an interview she did with Nylon Magazine last year, Jamie cleared up some Zoe 101 drama and actually revealed that the show had finished filming months before she even got pregnant. In the interview, Jamie said, quote, I didn't become pregnant until probably six months after we wrapped or something like that but some of the episodes had not aired yet. The show had already wrapped and there was never a negotiation to go into any more seasons. We were too old. It was done. Jamie left the limelight to raise her daughter and that was that. There was no drama with the pregnancy playing a role in the show. Those two things were completely separate which just means that people canceled Jamie for no reason. At number 9, Rebecca Black. I think that we all know Rebecca Black for her viral Friday song and music video. Everyone in middle school was singing that song when it came out, me included. Rebecca became famous almost overnight, but she faced a lot of negativity as well and you could say that she was even cancelled at the time. Rebecca was bombarded with hate comments for months, all for creating a silly song and music video that people really dubbed the worst video in the world. If you don't believe how badly she was treated, just think about the fact that she was invited on Good Morning America and the news anchors really asked a then 13 year old Rebecca whether the negative response to her music video had made her think about taking her own life. I mean, come on, that is so uncalled for. Rebecca is still performing and making music that is 10 times better than Friday, so go support her to make up for the years of torment that she was subjected to unnecessarily. At number 8, Ashley Simpson. Though people sometimes call it the worst moment in SNL history, it's a scandal that was blown out of proportions and ended a career. In 2004, Ashley Simpson was invited on SNL as the their musical guest to perform a few of her songs to promote her then newest album at the time, Autobiography. She planned to perform a few songs from said album and it started off fine when she performed her first song, Pieces of Me. When she got the band set up for the next song, music started playing but it wasn't the song that anyone was expecting to hear. A vocal track for Pieces of Me started playing again instead of the next song in her set, revealing that Ashley had been lip syncing the whole time. This scandal greatly affected her career as she lost credibility as a singer because she was caught lip syncing but also because she faced ridicule because of how embarrassing that moment was. Later on we found out that this was all caused because Ashley was advised by her father to have the vocal trap and lip sync because she was suffering from some severe acid reflux that had been causing damage to her vocal cords and he wanted her to rest her voice a little. There was a bigger reason behind the whole thing but you know that cancel culture doesn't take into account the outside information. She was left ridiculed by the public and her career was never the same. At number 7, Colin Kaepernick. Though you might not be familiar with the name, you no doubt know the movement. Former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick caused a huge scandal all because he took a knee during the national anthem. He did this because he quote, refused to support a country that he believes oppresses black people and other minorities. His actions caused a huge stir in the sporting community, mostly in the NFL. 
As a result of Colin refusing to stand for the anthem, every NFL franchise colluded to keep him out of the league. Colin ended up blacklisted from the NFL, even though his actions never broke any law or rule. The only thing he received in return was a settlement from the league and prompt social cancellation. During an interview with the NFL media, Colin defended his actions saying, quote, I am not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. To me, this is bigger than football and would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the streets and people getting paid leave, getting away with hurting others. This is not something that I'm going to run by anybody. I am not looking for approval. I have to stand up for people that are oppressed." End quote. At number six, Hayden Christensen. Imagine getting canceled for something that was completely out of your control. Well, that's pretty much what happened to actor Hayden Christensen after the release of Attack of the Clones, one of the Star Wars prequel films. When the film was first released back in 2002, critics tore the film's dialogue apart, especially the dialogue between Anakin and Padme. As a result, Hayden was ridiculed and mocked for his acting capabilities, even though many critics agreed that he just didn't have the best dialogue to work with. Even so, that is no reason to shun someone. You can't get mad at the actor for something that was out of his control. As for the writing, George George Lucas continues to defend the prequels and their dialogue. At number 5, Peter Norman. Another athlete who faced cancellation undeservingly was Peter Norman, the Australian Olympic athlete who was pretty much cancelled because of his support of the Black Power Salute. The 1968 Olympics in Mexico became a huge event in sports history when athletes Tommy Smith and John Carlos took the podium with their fists raised high and their heads bowed in a pose of black power. Next to them on the podium receiving his silver medal was Peter Norman. Though he did not raise his fist, he did join in the Black Power movement as he took the podium wearing a badge that read Olympic Project for Human Rights, an organization that was set up the year previous in opposition of racism in sport. Smith and Carlos returned home to their respective communities heroes and have been praised as human rights pioneers, but as for Peter, he was blacklisted. He returned to Australia to be greeted with hate. He never ran the Olympics again. At number four, Janet Jackson. The Super Bowl halftime show is one of the biggest television spectacles of each year. Millions of people tune in annually to watch the year's biggest performance. So really, the stakes are quite high for whoever is on stage that year. During the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, viewers watch a serious wardrobe malfunction happen that was life-changing and career-altering to say the least. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were performing together when a move went wrong and Janet's breast ended up being exposed. Following the incident, the media dubbed Nipplegate, the FCC sued CBS for the live incident in a $550,000 lawsuit citing indecent exposure for their cause. Jenna Jackson was also really put through the ringer for her part in the whole scandal, even though none of it was her fault. As a result, she was uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year, and her songs were blacklisted from the radio. Even the next few albums she released following the incident was met with negative reviews because of this scandal. It was later discovered that the whole incident happened because the two performers had added a costume reveal to their performance at the last minute, and though it was rehearsed, the stunt failed at the last minute, resulting in Janice's exposure. It was all just a huge accident that caused a huge scandal and ended with someone getting cancelled for no reason. At Number three, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods' 2009 bombshell cheating scandal shattered his good boy image and ended with him getting canceled as a result. It all started when Tiger had crashed his Cadillac into a fire hydrant and this incident made headlines, but these headlines also drew attention to other headlines he had made days earlier after tabloids published a story alleging that Tiger was having an affair with a nightclub manager. Soon one alleged affair turned into many more as six women ended up coming forward saying that they had also had intimate relationships with with the golfer. Tiger issued statement after statement and apology after apology until he was left picking up the pieces of his tarnished reputation. He had sponsors drop him because of the scandal, even though it had nothing to do with sports. Tiger went through a rough time being exposed for an addiction and infidelity, but none of that was cause for canceling him and ruining his career. At number two, Britney Spears. In 2007 and 2008, Britney Spears was well and truly cancelled. This was all a result of her troubled time in the media. During this time, the media was putting pressure on her with allegations that she had cheated on Justin Timberlake, which we now know thanks to the Framing Britney Spears documentary was all because Justin wanted to use their breakup for publicity. Britney was also being scrutinized for an apparent substance abuse problem to which she entered rehab for, albeit for a short period of time, only spending 24 hours at a facility in Antigua. Following this scandal, 
Britney found herself making headlines again after news sources reported on how Britney had taken clippers to her head and went bald. Following the hair shaving fiasco, then came the umbrella incident. This all ended with the media labeling Britney as crazy and her life went downhill with her ex taking over custody of her sons and her father being given conservatorship over the pop star. Britney did not deserve to be treated like that by the public so this new free Britney movement can almost be seen as the public making up for how she was treated years ago. And finally at number one, Winona Ryder. Actress Winona Ryder hit rock bottom in the media after her shoplifting scandal back in 2001. Winona was caught stealing merchandise from a Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills, and this scandal ended her career for quite a long time as she was sort of cancelled for it. The actress was arrested after stealing $5,500 worth of merchandise and was charged with grand theft and vandalism and was found guilty of her crimes. She was forced to pay a fine of $2,700 and had to complete 480 hours of community service. It's hard to imagine that this scandal left her cancelled, while these days people can tweet out horribly offensive things or be caught in scandals with fans, James Charles, and walk away away from it. Yes, what Winona did was bad, but I don't think she deserved to be cancelled over it when there are people out here doing much worse. 